Matthew. We'll see you back here at the half. Mike, thank you very much. Welcome to Fort Worth, where they are thrilled to have Big Tell play back. UCF 2-0. and And to take on the Horned Frogs, also 2-0 and with TCU trying to get back to the place they were two years ago to the college football playoff. And it starts tonight for real. TCU in their second home game, getting set to come out of that tunnel. And we are so happy to have you with us with Mark Helfrich. Yes, I'm Connor Onion. And TCU, they want to get back to that place we just mentioned, college football playoff two years ago. For UCF, it's about belonging in the Big 12, a disappointing year in their first year in the league. Yeah, no doubt. They say styles make fights, right? I think we've got totally contrasting styles, and it's going to be a great fight in an unbelievable atmosphere. It is sold out. More than half the student body is here for TCU. And the Horn Frogs are ready to take the field, jacked up to be in front of their home crowd for the second straight week. And if you like points, stay with us all night. No doubt. You saw that kind of wry smile on Sonny Dyke's face there. He knows he got, he's got dudes. He's got weapons galore. The big three at receiver is Savion Williams, J.P. Richardson, and Jack Besh. But don't sleep on JoJo Earl as the fourth guy is unbelievable. Cam Cook out of the backfield so good and so versatile. But the key, the mission critical for the Horned Frogs, keep Hoover clean. Keep him upright, confident, in rhythm. It can be scary. Incredibly accurate. Josh Hoover completed 14 consecutive passes in their win against LIU last week. So that's the passing game. UCF dominant in the trenches and in the running back room. Yeah, Gus Balzal is always going to be able to run the rock as always. He does a great job with the play action game. It's a KJ and RJ show. KJ Jefferson, an experienced, confident guy, a load at 250. And then RJ Harvey, Mr. Orlando, one of really four talented backs in that room. Well, R.J. Harvey, one of the most underappreciated backs in America. The Game Countdown brought to you by Progressive. If this game is as good as the tailgating scene in Fort Worth, you are not going to want to go anywhere. Stay with us all night. It's UCF, TCU, Big 12 play. Gets rolling right after this. Welcome back to Fort Worth, where it is crowded, it is hot, and I don't think 93 degrees is an accurate feel of <laughs> no. what it's like down in the field. Yeah, we did two laps around walking, walking, and we were sweating. It'd be a full suit, for, you know, we had to get a little credit, but it's, it is hot, and they are ready to rock here at Fort Worth. So not only do we get a look at Texas speed versus Florida speed, but Texas heat versus Florida heat. And who wins out as far as conditioning in this game? Right now, defensive coordinator Ted Roof was hilarious yesterday. He's like, this is a real humidity. Our humidity hurts you. Now, TCU won the toss. They defer. So UCF on the road will get the first crack at it in Big 12 play on offense. Kyle Lemmerman has it teed off. Here we go in the Big 12. And UCF brings it out with Townsend from his own goal line. And TCU all over the dangerous return man. You are 100% right there all over. And he can be the difference in this, in this game. Xavier Townsend does a little bit of everything. Gets the ball in reverses in the return game. Very dangerous. And it's going to be this man, K.J. Jefferson, that might get him the ball in those play-action situations. 6'3", 250. The Arkansas transfer is a load for Gus Malzahn in this night attack. And Mark, you'll be undaunted by being in this hostile road wow. environment. He silenced the swamp, beating Florida yep. while he was at Arkansas. He stunned Death Valley, beating LSU on the road. Looking to check another box in a road game and a conference game. This time in the Big 12. And this game starts with Harvey on the ground, and that'll be a big focal point of the backers for TCU. Can they hold him off of 
yards off of contact today. That's the, the big yeah. question mark for CCU's. These guys are almost like playing, like Gus Bell's on team is almost like playing a triple option team. This is like playing, you know, Air Force or something like that. You've got to account for the quarterback. You have to account for that motion that just was created by Xavier Townsend and then this stable of backs. And Harvey checks out. It's Johnny Richardson taking the second snap out of the slot. Got him. Jefferson over the top, and he oh, missed him. Kobe Hudson streaking behind the secondary. And it'll be third down for Jefferson and UCF. There's the game that Sonny Dykes and defensive creator and Diablos have to play. This is man coverage with Broughton, and he is clean. Hudson is clean. KJ Jefferson 0 for 1 on huge deep ball opportunity right there. Marcel Brooks checks in, bottom side of the screen, pass rush specialist. Was late getting off the ball on his third and seven. And then Jefferson on the move to the sideline. He was hauled in, but was he in bounds? He was not. Yeah, we're saying no great coverage. Jacoby Jones, the intended target, and it'll be fourth down for the Knights. Yeah, again, one on one with Broughton. KJ Jefferson bought himself time. It turns into a scramble drill towards the end. A little tug there. Got to get that right hand. And looks like that ball's moving. KJ Jefferson took a shot. Alarms or as you see the ball definitely out, definitely make contact that Big 12 crew right on it. And David Alvarez, head referee, the white hat in this game, so three and out for UCF. And JP Richardson, a returnable punt off the first surge through the second surge. It'll be a good field position for TCU to start this game on offense. So Josh Hoover, our new co-worker at Fox, Tom Brady, will like the attitude for Hoover this year. Less Brett Favre, more Tom Brady is how Sonny Dykes <laughs> wants his quarterback to approach this season, meaning less gunslinging, more yep. precise, and less chances taken. Absolutely. It's all about rhythm. And as you said, unbelievably efficient last week, 72% on the year. We saw him last year in Lubbock struggle, making some of those gunslinging mistakes. This guy is fun to watch when he's in rhythm. Now Central Florida, on the other hand, has to disrupt that. We'll see how they do that. Ted, veteran defensive coordinator Ted Roof will have to change up looks, change up rushes to disrupt it. First play is a great pass, pop out for Cook. And Cook on the edge through an arm tackle at midfield. And a good start for the TCU offense, led by Hoover with lots of guys to get the ball to around him. Great drive, drive starter right there by Kendall Bryles. He loses the guys that will get it going. James Brockerbier with Via Alabama back to Sweet Home Fort Worth. Jack Besh on the perimeter. That, that guy, they said Hoover and Besh 100% trust with each other. One of, as we talked about in the open, Savion Williams, J.P. Richards, Jack Besh, take your pick, all threats. And all three of those top receivers went over 85 yards in a week one win over Stanford for TCU. Hoover over the middle, nobody there had contact done at his legs. <laughs> And this UCF defense that's trying to garner more impact pressure. Just one sack in their first two games. Yeah, Nigel e. Kelly has to get it going. One, one, he's the, the sacker last week. Ted Roof, again, we talked about the veteran defense. Put a ton of stops. Deshaun Pace, the Cincinnati transfer, has a pick on the year. And then Braden Marshall, they say, is their most improved player. Marshall, the youngest player on the starting defense for UCF. For the pass and the run at that nickel spot. On third and two, Hoover on target. And a first down to Eric McAllister. And TCU stays on the field. Great little zone concept right there, a little spacing concept. Watch him build a little triangle right there. Good timing. Nice pickup on third and short versus that zone look. Start talking about those top three wide receivers and then another one of those weapons for TCU, McAllister, on the board on third down. Here is one of those top guys, J.P. Richardson, out to the edge, quickly run down by Sheldon Arnold. You can see what Kendall Bryles, the offensive coordinator, is setting out to try to do, get the ball on his head, get it in rhythm right before Brayton Marshall gets on the scene. Great rhythm throw to J.P. Richardson. 
You'll see TCU deploy about three different tempos, a true huddle, a sugar huddle, and then true speed tempo. Out of the belly, Hoover on target again. And back-to-back -back completions. This one to Jack Besh for the first time. Third down and short, just like it was a few plays ago. Yeah, Sheldon Arnold almost looked like he kind of hesitated. He couldn't believe he was throwing that ball. That, that hesitation just made him move that, that much late to the scene. Set up third and one. On this opening touch for TCU, already a third down conversion. On third and one this time. Quick pop out to the tight end, Dramney, and two for two on this opening drive for the Horned Frogs. Drake Dabney is a big old target, 6'5", 255. He traded, traded colors from Baylor. Great job on the perimeter of not doing anything silly by Savion Williams, avoiding like a crackback block situation there. Right there, you can see him avoid contact. Doesn't draw a flag. Dramney is catching touchdowns against Tees. Yes. Past couple of years. Shows your pressure. And then quick pop out, and Richardson over the middle, close to another first down. Great rhythm, great recognition by Hoover and J.P. Richardson. There's that zero pressure. You see the linebacker popping out late. His 32 ball, trying to get underneath it, and too late. Great timing by Richardson and Hoover. Richardson said he was that close. Sticks moving in, Cook on the ground. And then, and then Cook is kind of that body blow. You're going to see a stable of backs on that UCF sideline. I think Cam Cook is going to be the feature back. They love this guy, his ability to protect and get some of those hard yards. Well, Sonny Dykes said that last year the feeling around his team was angst. The pressure that came with going to the national championship game in 2022. There is true confidence because of a leader like Josh Hoover, his quarterback. Hoover's a year older. Everyone's on the same page. And in the belly of the feature back, Cook. First chance for Cook to be the lead guy. You they mentioned he's the feature guy. He's going to get about 90% of the carries tonight. Yeah, he's, he's fun to watch. He's physical from, from Round Rock. Great relationship. Hoover has great chemistry with all these guys. It was fun to kind of hear all those other guys talk about Hoover. And it came back to Hoover, Camp Cook, and Jack Besh. Together a 10 play drive. This is the 10th play right here to the end zone, and TCU caps it with a touchdown. Eric McAllister with the first touchdown in Big 12 play. Well, we saw it, we said if they could protect and play in rhythm, watch him bring a one linebacker bar coming off the side there. Picked up nicely by Mike Nichols and a dime from Josh Hoover to McAllister on the quarter route versus man coverage. Did you do that dance last night? You know, nobody at the stockyards can confirm or deny, but we'll leave you on that cliffhanger as we yes. go to break. A couple catches from McAllister on that opening drive, a 10 play drive for the Horned Frogs. And they lead it 7-zip in the first game of Big 12 play in 2024. Fox College Football is sponsored by Bank of America. What would you like the power to do? Well, the fever pitch that was Fort Worth, Texas two years ago because of the Horned Frogs on the football field going all the way the national championship game the feeling when we were in the building yesterday it reminded you a lot of how Sonny Dykes was using messaging to talk to his team didn't it no doubt I mean last year it almost sounded like I heard, heard Sonny I've known Sonny for a ton of years you heard him talk and it was almost like he was he was trying to convince himself hey all these guys are gonna be good enough we're gonna put this all together and that's hard and you know he, he said it as much yesterday it is hard to turn the page in that season you're late to your winter condition your, your winter program your some you know it was just it was fascinating it was just eye-opening for him to to share that with us and so far so good today and so far so good this year but he loves this team he loves the culture of this team and loves the efficiency of young and improved and aging josh hoover UCF's offense, they'll come out for the second time. 
And before that, it's time to stay in the game, sponsored by Hampton by Hilton. Hilton for the stay. For UCF, it's impose their offensive identity. Again, that's quarterback run game. That's distribute the carries between these four talented tailbacks and hit a shot for TCU. Saw it on that first drive. Change pace and five, five playmakers. They did a great job distributing the ball. Quick game, downfield shots, corner routes, RPO, a little bit of everything. We'll see what Coach Balzon has for an answer. You know he's always got something. Always something. There's always something in that clipboard. That play sheet is as big as this state. No doubt. And the fake pitch, Jefferson ahead, and he rarely goes down on first contact. You really got to get underneath him and stay low to drive him. Yep, and included in that is a little same side quarterback power option read to get the big guy in space. Put that ball away here. Watch this ball flail here at the end. It's going to be a, a fun matchup tonight. Jefferson on that first down run. We've got around Johnny Hodges, who was the leading tackler on that college football playoff team two years ago. Yeah, don't let the uh, cowboy caller fool you. This guy is an athletic dude. Tough, tough, tough. The transfer from Navy, the great story about Sunday night's playing against him and saying, hey, we need that guy. You can't see it under the helmet, but electric blonde hair. Yes, yeah, I'm always jealous of that. You know that. Hard hitting dude right there. And around it with Townsend. It's a priority for UCF to get the ball in his hands a lot. Gus Melzon, the head coach for UCF, said eight to ten touches for Townsend. And that might be on the low end. Yeah, he's the guy that they've they got to get it going based on the return game. Hasn't had an opportunity to affect the game yet. But again, as you said, that guy has a lot of, a lot of chemical reactions on that play sheet to get that guy the ball. Gus Malzahn, year two in the Big 12 for UCF. Gus Malzahn will exclusively full dash trying to get the ideal call here by going no huddle, getting a look. And and there it is. They stick with what works best. R.J. Harvey for a first down. Andy Avalos, the TCU defensive coordinator, said we cannot live in third and two against these big backs. Exactly. They motion to that three-by-one set into the boundary, the bunch into the boundary, then the motion and the back block creating space for Harvey. And Jefferson pulls it out. Another touch for Townsend. There's number two, and he's wrangled down by Bud Clark. Who's back from illness after missing last week's game? Yeah, they were jacked about having Bud, Bud Clark back in there, and I, you can see why in space to get Townsend to the to the ground in space very difficult. Got to have a great tackling night if you're a Horn Frog fan. One on one in space between again KJ Jefferson, Townsend, all the backs. Going to be a lot of one on one opportunities. Jefferson pulls it out of the belly of Richardson through tackles. That's what you were just talking about. One guy does not get Jefferson to the ground first down. No, and, and Travis brought in here the Utah transfer. Watch him become the brunt of 250. Same side, little read concept, and getting a vertical. Get with that ball. I'm worried there for KJ Jefferson. Brought just says, I'm going to take a charge and get him to the ground. 11 yards for Jefferson. What did you say? Eight or nine of those after contact? Yes, no doubt. Three and out for Jefferson and UCF. Their first touchdown plus territory for the first time. And Jefferson escaped, got it away, and it's knocked down by McDonald. That is the power of being 250 pounds. That should be a loss of 10. No doubt. Unbelievable effort right here by K.J. Jefferson. You'll see the pressure from O.B. Izor as the adder with a six-man protection, and they add him in there. And wow, it is a, 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 a night nation taking a collective sigh of relief that ball hit the ground. Well, O.B. Izor... Such a fearsome hitter. He snapped his own mouthpiece twice last week. And not even he could get Jefferson down. Jefferson pulls and into the teeth of that TCU front. Third down and medium after a four-yard pickup. 
We saw McDonald there in the backfield tackling Miles Montgomery to the ground. Again, it's almost like a triple option to think. you got to account for every element of that. Essentially, the dive back, the pull from KJ Jefferson and getting vertical. And then all those horn frogs. We learned this weekend an army. It's an army of horn frogs, right? Like a, Not a herd. flock or a herd or whatever. It's an army of horn frogs to KJ Jefferson. After a 10 play TCU drive, this is the ninth play of this drive for the Knights. Jefferson through the hands and incomplete. So fourth down and six in an area where you're tempted to go for it, but the field goal unit's coming out. Yeah, take a look here. They had R.J. Harvey ended up a wheel route on McDonald. Came back to that. Johnson says, oh, no, I'll lock that down. Randy Pittman couldn't corral it, so a 47-yard field goal try for Colton Boomer. He's healthier than last year. He has a perfect start. And Boomer never got that air ball. Raised the top of the line, and UCF comes up without points. Yeah, this looked like a, a miss hit. We'll take a look at the snap and the hold. Just really low. Happy for frogs. College football on Fox is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Built to serve. On Runyon, Mark Elfrich in Fort Worth. This was the kick from Boomer that didn't get very high off the ground. Yeah, the snap was clean. The hold was was good and just, just mishit it. Took a little, little divot beforehand. Last night, Coach Malzahn told us that he thought he was good from 52-ish is what he told us. So, play it, play it, play it. Nice to that miss. <laughs> 47 on the miss for Boomer. And Josh Hubert, quarterback, back out there for TCU. Six of seven on that first drive. Led to the touchdown to McAllister. Off a pump. He's taking a shot and off the hands of Jack Pesh. We had Mac McWilliams in coverage running with him. Yeah, Kendall Bryles, offensive coordinator, Josh, who were trying to go for a little double move. You see Savion Williams pump the little rail route and try to hit the big one to Besh, but just a miss. If you're going to miss on that throw against that coverage, that's a good spot to miss. Great job overlapping. Frustrated. Yes. Because as accurate as he's been, those don't happen much. And out to the edge, Dadney takes pace for a ride for a first down. That snapped a string, that last pass that was incomplete. Six straight completions. And you almost expect every ball airborne right now for Hoover to be caught. Yeah, the guy's been so good when they, they, they've done a great job that first drive. Six of seven. As we said, great management of scheme, timing, distribution. Dabney has been kind of in the X factor really so far in this game. A couple of catches, both have gone for first down to the TCU tight end Dabney. And UCF waiting for Cam Cook, no gain on that play. Yeah, we talked, last, we there. talked last night, is it going to be Randy Pittman, the UCF tight end who kind of does a little bit of everything. Drake Dabney, a big physical athletic target. You like the tight ends in this game. Yes. Yeah. Rare passes for Hoover that's off target. This one to Richardson, and it's third down. You saw the screen and go. Sheldon Arnold that time sitting on it, triggering it. At some point here, Kendall Bryles and company are going to go with a slant and go off of that, that same action and put Sheldon Arnold in coverage. Great job, great job that time. And TCU on that first drive, perfect on third down, and they're way to the touchdown from McAllister. There's a check with the sideline, check with me. Under 15 seconds, so the quarterback communication is off. On third and 10, Hoover. Helmets flying off around the line of scrimmage. Didn't matter for Hoover. It's complete to pass for 22 yards and a first down. This is what Sonny Dyke said. Hey, he has 100% trust in Jack Besh. Watch him take a shot right here and let it go early for his guy. It's Ricky Barber. A lighten up Hoover. Great job getting to the quarterback just a fraction too late. First down, four throws. Those are those near misses. Ted Roof, the defensive yep. coordinator for UCF, wants to become finished in week three. Just one sack for UCF in two games. Tip ball. 
<laughs> and incomplete. Savion Williams juggled it. Brandon Adams is ready to pounce on the tip. Savion Williams, just an absolute freak athlete. Just a little locked hitch, trying to get him a catch in space. Great job by Adams. There's a good look at Ted Roof. You see him rip it out. Ted Roof, a veteran. Bunch of stops. Last last stop at OU in the, in the old Big 12, of course. So he's seen Kendall Brown's offense just last year. Back shoulder for McAllister. And incomplete. The touchdown score on the first drive, fended off by Adams. Yeah, nice coverage by Adams again. They're going to leave these guys on the perimeter, whether it's quarters where it basically becomes man or man coverage when they're bringing pressure, man free situations. They have total confidence in this secondary. The Ted Roof secondary is a little bit short handed. Damari Henderson, an all Big 12 safety from last year. Hasn't played the first two games, not available tonight. It's been on Quadric Bullard in the back end. Play at a high level in the 2-0 start for the Knights. Third down and 10. Hoover underneath. McAllister looking for the sticks. He's got him. And TCU stays perfect on third down in this game. This little mesh, shallow cross concept here. Watch him come left to right. You'll see him cross pass with Chase Curtis, the tight end. And nothing but space out of front. Hoover keeps him running. Natural rub there, not a pitch. The, uh, the key for Kendall Brown's offense apparently is get to third down and 10. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Two explosive plays on third and 10. Not normally your ideal situation. Got him back inside the red zone. Save young Williams in the backfield. Sneaky there. Hoover looking left all the way for Williams. High points the ball. Williams, touchdown, Horn Frogs. Unreal. This is a play off of a play. The motion out. Savio Williams, a little double move pump to Camp Cook. Throw it up for the big fella. 6-5, go get it, Savion. Mm. Those little locked hitches, you know, on air and space. <laughs> that one was hard to catch, but wow, was that impressive going up to get it. You said how impressive he looks when he gets off the bus. He's a... Freaks list honoree by our friend Bruce Feldman for good reason. Because he can jump out of the gym. Look at that. Bruce, Bruce is correct, like, like yep. most times. That 40 inch bird oh. shows up through two DBs over the top of Marshall and McWilliams. 14 zip TCU. Savion Williams touchdown, but first the play that set it up. This is the one that set it up. Watch Camp Cook early on. Little motion out. Setting up this little flare screen bubble action, getting him in speed and space. And look at it's deja vu all over again. An aggressive defense. What do you want to try to do? Some double moves here and there. He's really not open. The ball should go to Cam Cook right there. But he says, hey, my guy's really good. He's 6'5. He's got elite hair. He'll go if we get it. Elite hair, elite vertical. And a touchdown for Savion Williams. So we talked about Gus Melzahn and that deep play sheet that he has. What does he have for down 14 nothing? Horn Frogs in control at home in the first quarter. Deep in the heart of Texas. Fox College Football is sponsored by Pacific Life. Creating financial security for nearly 160 years. Fun run in with Mark Helfrich. Let's go inside the film room with UCF's offense. Yeah, here's UCF against New Hampshire. It's just a little nuance. A lot of people run this play. Gus Malzahn, just a little spice on it with a switch release. The tight end, a little double move. All mice by Randy Pittman, the other tight end. But he ends up checking it down to Miles Montgomery, and he just runs a track meet 100, 100 yard dash to the end zone. He needs to dial up something like that to keep his team in it. And a pre snap flag comes out. 
after UCF's third drive starts. Not the ideal way to get that started. False start. Offense, number five, five-yard penalty. Still first down. Randy Pittman's excited to get something going. Well, Gus Malzahn, his team beat Sam Houston easily last week. They ran for almost 400 yards for the second straight week. But he opened up his post-game thoughts with... Five offensive penalties. Yep. That's my takeaway from this game. Exactly. Yep. Five offensive penalties, not being able to run the ball, the opener, exactly how they wanted to. So in a hole after the penalty, they go to their stout back, RJ Harvey, working off a couple of tackles for 10 yards. Yeah, that's the bread and butter right there, RJ Harvey. He's he's powerful. He gets skinny but stays big at 5'9, 208. UCF 7 here, so TCU give the opportunity to do a little, uh, this is the defense's new favorite thing, to do a little turtle, a little slow substitution, and get all dialed in because, because UCF substituted, if they can match. The turtle because it's so slow. Yeah, no offense to, to Tommy Mitchell and Caleb Fox. It's a technique. That's not their 40 time coming off the no. sideline. Well, flip out for Townsend. And they love that play so much that they ran it on back-to-back -back <laughs> yes. plays to Towns. And last week, he's got a first down here. Yeah, he always went to his big as a coach. Do I run two screens in a row? Do I run two reverses in a row? Well, they did last week. Why? Because this guy is athletic. You see him in space. Great job by Caden Kittler getting out there in front. Does he dial up back-to-back, back-to-back? No, nope, he's already saying. I was going to say no. It's got hard to run a reverse from there. Unless it's the old hidden sub play. <laughs> Jefferson off play action. And a whole shot got Pittman, who took a shot. Gabe Camara laid the wood, but a first down for Pittman on the contested catch. Yeah, when this ball went up, I was like, mm, watch Camara come off the hash and light him up, keep that ball a little wider. Great oh. job securing it. That is a great feel for UCF. That is not. Johnny Hodges in the backfield, but what they want to do is unlock the passing game tonight and unlock their big tight end Randy Pittman in space. I love this guy, man. He does dirty work. He's like he's a utility tight end. He's physical. He'll go up and get that ball. He plays fullback. He can motion. He can play spit out, spit out, split out. If I can say split, he's really good. Spit out, split out. Yep, see, he's split out, out right out. now. Right here. Let's just throw it out here and I'll run through these little TPs. And he's blocking here and nowhere to go for Jefferson. Osafa Mensa was the first guy to get a hit on Jefferson to bring up third down. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. Hats to the ball carrier, especially when it is number one KJ Jefferson pulling it. Osafa Mensa kind of tricks him, plays it with the little squeeze technique. He says, Nice job from Caleb Elarch's or Mustafa Menso is joking this week. This conference play everybody's talking about. <laughs> what is that? He came from Notre Dame. Of course, independent. Yes. Playing in his first Big 12 game tonight on the edge for TCU. Jefferson with heat in his face. Got it away. And that is caught. Kobe Hudson hanging on for dear life for 14 yards and a first down. KJ Jefferson says, hey, Josh Hoover, I got you. You took a shot and delivered. Your guy made a play. Kobe Hudson golden like another Kobe. Look at that shot right in the face from Caleb Elam's or Great finish by KJ Jefferson. The end of one. 15 minutes through UCF on their second drive in plus territory. Looking for their first points. It's been all horn frogs. Trying to return to that fever pitch they felt two years ago. Starting Big 12 play in Fort Worth. T-Mobile team comparison sponsored by T-Mobile, America's largest 5G network Yardage, not that far off through one quarter, but yeah, the points yeah. are. Look at the seating there on a 14 nothing score. UCF putting putting a drive drive together here, making some great plays to keep this thing going. KJ Jefferson off the jet play action. Sideline shot. He's got a man. It's Harvey. Touchdown. UCF. 
A drive that started with a penalty backed up in their own territory ends on a 29-yard hit to Harvey. Hey, get the ball. Great protection, great execution. Gus Malzahn coming out of the timeouts to say, let's dial it up to Mr. Orlando. R.J. Harvey, great job finishing that play. A hard sell, base run play action. See if they can clean up their kick operation. Boomer missed from 47 yards on a field goal. Low snap. And all good in the end for the Knights. <laughs> The smile has returned for K.J. Jefferson after the long scoring drive. R.J. Harvey to the house for the night. Let's take a look at that 29-yard touchdown. R.J. Harvey's in the backfield, the lone back. is set up with a little jet sweep action. And watch the bottom. Kobe Hudson, a little deep curl to grab the attention of a corner. And the key, look at that protection. Randy Pittman, honorable mention, great protection. And they don't match it in the back end. Touchdown, Knights. That drive, Mark, was dangerously close right. to ending. Yeah, yeah, tackles for loss, sacks, great catches, great throws under pressure by K.J. Jefferson. That one right there, great protection up front. So now, UCF. Trying to crank up the pressure on Josh Huber, who's led a 10-play drive and a 9-play drive for touchdowns. Yeah, we'll see what both defensive coordinators kind of do next, but Hoover has been as advertised right here. Five-man pressure, throwing it out. That was the third down conversion to McAllister, had a touchdown to McAllister we saw earlier. Just a great connection from those two guys. They're so worried about David Williams and Richardson and Earl and Besh. It's been Dabney and McAllister doing a little dirty work. He's been accurate, Hoover has, at all three levels tonight. Inside 10, medium range, and down here, but that's swallowed up. Deshaun Pace up to Nail Cook. This guy's fun to watch, man. 6'2", 220, Cincinnati transfer just runs through the block. They had four on three, so Hoover liked it. Kendall Breyer's like, obviously, those, those numbers. Pace should not be able to run through that great play. Pace hit him for the six-yard loss. Pace crossing over rivalry lines coming from Cincinnati to UCF. The ball off target. Flag comes out. With Savion Williams locked up in the middle of the field. Yeah, it was Savion. And I believe that time Tennyson is going to get the flag. They just got tangled up. Pass interference. Defense number 13. Automatic first down. Spot on the foul. Tennyson called for it. it looked like he was kind of on basically like a post curl comeback type of concept. And you see 13 very conscious of where safe Williams is at all times. And a little grab and that's the that's the I'm guilty mm -hmm. pass interference look right there. Play the next play. Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator for the Knights, is thinking we finally got a negative play in the penalty. The first down. Direct snap for Savion Williams, who does have a big arm. We could see a pass out of that look tonight. Yeah, there, there are tricks on both sidelines here. Deep, deep playbooks between Sonny Dykes, between Kettle Flyers, Bryles. We know Gus Malzahn's deep, deep encyclopedic tricks. We did see a pass from Williams last week. Yep, yep. yep. RJ Harvey, a yep. former quarterback. Everybody's got a hidden quarterback. Yes. Back to the traditional look on second and eight for Hooper. And off target for Cook. And Pace right there with him. A couple good plays on this drive now for Pace. Yeah, Pace, Pace can cover sideline to sideline. Box, box linebacker, they blitz him. Had the one pick off the, the tip. But just a really fun guy to watch inside out. Physical, athletic. Well, here's the test. TCU, four of four on the night on third down. Back-to-back -back explosive plays on third and ten last drive. This is a third and eight. Four-man rush for Hoover. And into that clean pocket, another bullseye on third down. Jack Besh keeps this drive going for the Horn Frog. Nice timing, great protection. 
Running back ends up helping right there. Big chip that time on Malachi Lawrence. Nice throw and catch, especially as through the chains. On first down, Hoover right back on target, right back to Best. And give him eight after the 18 yard game. A great with Sonny Dyke's description of, of Besh was talking about the total confidence of Josh Hoover. And he also said, this guy's like the high energy life of the party. Everybody loves him. You can see why. And Dominique Johnson breaks to the second level. First down with some attitude on the back end of it for Brandon Adams. Dominique Johnson saying, man, I got to make the most of my carries here. 230 pound load, a big old change up from Cam Cook's 195. Change ups are supposed to be slow and steady and over the plate. That's not <laughs> that's, Dominic. That's moderate Johnson. and thick and gonna hit you. That's the Paul Skeens change up right there. After <laughs> uh, 10 yards for Johnson over the middle and good coverage from Adams. So we've seen some huddling from TCU in this game, which is breaking news for Kendall Bryles led offense. He said, frankly, we're huddling great, and it's embarrassing. How great was that? Both he and Sonny Dykes, you know, from that no huddle, the, the Mike Leach tree, that whole, you know, thing. They, they're like, yeah, we, we had to Google it. We had to YouTube how to huddle. And Sonny Dykes was like, I haven't huddled with one of my teams since eighth grade. Not in the playbook. After the Adams pass breakup, dump down to Cook. And can't weave around pace. So a third down coming again, but this is right where TCU is comfortable. Yeah, they've been great on third down tonight, especially third and long here. And even probably the better follow-up is we brought that up to, to Gus Malzahn. He's like, yeah, what, what's the deal with these guys? Like, you would have thought somebody stole his puppy that people were huddling. It was like unbelievable. You know, he's like, oh, you know, I saw my boy Rhett Lashley over there huddling. I, 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 what's going on? <laughs> Beautiful accent. That's, that's, well, I could go full. That's right. Gus the Southern. He's, you know, we got two native Texan head coaches here. Third and eight. Cook oh. his back shoulder. And one more time. A third and eight is converted from Hoover to Cook for 10 yards. Just great timing. Josiah Pierre try to chase him inside out. Watch 14 try to run with him. Just a little bit rerouted. Great job by Cam Cook opening that back, back hip there and making the play for Hoover. For UCF on defense right now. Yeah, what's Ted Roof? Like? What do we dial up? It's the dial of defense. It's dial of offense. Great distribution from Kendall Breyer, Bryles offensive coordinator, and Sunny Dykes. TCU has been excellent in the red zone to start this season. Back in there for the third time tonight, and Hoover has to ground it. Wisely does so, both in the direction of somebody who was outside the pocket. It wasn't back to the line of scrimmage, but in the general area of an eligible receiver. That, that time, Deshaun Pace matched that little line route from TC to try to get the first start. We showed you the numbers for TCU. Josh Hoover would tell you there's more they can do down here. He still regrets that fumble he had in the Stanford game before halftime. East and West, it's Cook. And into the arms of Sheldon Arnold. No gain there. Third down coming again. Kev Cook, it's, he's like one of those guys. He doesn't look like a burner, but he's got just enough speed. Watch him outrun Isaiah Nixon. Getting blocked by Mike Nichols right there. And, and then a physical collision from Mac McWilliams. A little sneaky acceleration yes, in this game. Yes, yes, no doubt. Cam Cook will check out on third down. Well, this has been the inflection point of this game so far. TCU perfect on third down. Six of six. UCF host hoping to force a field goal try. Hoover protected. Hoover back to the air. And Williams with a twisting catch. Up high, twisting. He can do it all. Williams' is second touchdown. Just a straight up rhythm post here, and no heat did just do that. Wow. Firm control, the ball again, chest first, then to the ground. No doubt about that one. They'll confirm it. Josh Hoover, you better go dap him up. Mm. Give him a little extra love. Great play by Savion Williams. 
I think you told the fans you can't see me, <laughs> but America is watching you, wow. Savion Williams. Again, folks, 6 5 25, the Marshall, Texas native. That's a wow. Out, here we go, off his shoulder, outside shoulder, thank you. Three drives, three touchdowns. All through the air for TCU after a game of Twister broke out in the end zone for Williams. Second time on the board tonight, Savion Williams, a freak indeed. Fox College Football is sponsored by KFC. It's finger licking good. A catch, that catch was freaking looking good right there. Great protection. You see Pierre trying to get up, and that, that is so hard to do. When that ball came out of time, I thought it was behind him. I thought it was going to get picked. I thought he was just going to react and knock it down. He says, no, I got you. I got you, who What if we got the first one? Went back to get it. Now we're going to take a look at that Microsoft tablet on the sideline and review that catch. Wow. That guy's doing that because he saw it. I think you'll see it a few more times, too. Yes. Xavier Williams just did for his second touchdown of the night. Let's look at our Pacific Life game summary, sponsored by Pacific Life. Creating financial security for nearly 160 years. Well, Josh Hoover couldn't do it much better. Got a little help from his friends on a couple of these plays. Yeah. <laughs> man, Savion, I'm trying, trying to go through all the highlights. Man, he can't cook a couple great catches. Dabney's been exceptional. And then K.J. Jefferson, got to put a drive together here, chunk it for Gus Malzahn, and keep him in it. You're, you're a former offensive play caller, and I can just hear the joy in your voice. These are two, two great coaches, great schemes, sporting defenses as well. We saw the twisting catch by Williams, and then the bruising style of UCF with the nation's best rushing offense to this point. But playing in a hold it. Yeah, he won't blink. You know, Gus Malzahn won't, won't blink. K.J. Jefferson won't blink. Again, these four deep running backs that UCF have tried to deploy, they won't blink it. He's been here before. He fell behind to, to going against defensive coordinator Andy Avalos a couple of opportunities and came back and won. UCF played Boise State last year, where the TCU defensive coordinator was the head coach. Won on a game-winning field goal. Oh, my goodness. That was almost a done deal with Devin Deal in the backfield, but trickeration leads to a first down. Yeah, Johnson's checking his mouthpiece right here. K.J. Jefferson says, it's a read. I'm reading that guy. He goes outside and absolutely lights him up. Deal. That's a good job covering his assignment again. Assignment football, option football by the defense. Deal, you did your job. Javarius Johnson oh, deserves a very high grade on yes. that. He was the one that was the sacrifice for that first down to happen. This is Miles Montgomery ahead for a couple of yards. And the UCF, the, the messaging from the coaching staff was, let's show the outside world we belong in this conference. It was not easy on the road. They didn't pick up that first Big 12 road win until late at Cincinnati last year. No doubt. And, you know, these guys have they've seen, like, seen like everyone, this, this conference is wide open. They think they've got the talent to do it, certainly the schemes to do it. We got to do it on the road in a hostile environment against a skilled unit. Johnny Richardson is swallowed up. Third down coming. It'd be interesting if Miles Montgomery comes back in. He went out after that last play. Richardson is the, the smallest of the backs, 5'7, 175. Very elusive. Talked about the Big 12 being wide open. This is the tone setter tonight. Watched our friends Tim Brando and Devin Gardner last night. Remember, that's yeah, a non-conference non non game. game. Yes, yes. Non-conference game last night. This is for real tonight. This counts for the Big 12 standings. Off play action. Heat's coming. Jefferson got away. Wow. Using that 250-pound body and surviving to throw it incomplete. 
but that pressure for TCU forces a fourth down. Marcel Brooks ran him down. That was a spectacular throwaway. Two come unblocked from the boundary. Heating up from the boundary that time by defensive corner Andy Avalos had a great job throwing that away. Looked like he had a chance to get it out to Townsend for a game, but running for his life after that escape. So the first punt for Mitch McCarthy was 50 yards. This is his second time out there and a few markers out there. Looks like they got the little rug rugby movement uh, up front and false start there, I believe. False start. Offense. Multiple players. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. That's either the multiple players or uh, everybody but the snapper type of uh, move right there. A bunch of guys were moving. Sandy Dykes loving it. It's not his unit with a pre-snap penalty. <laughs> Big drive coming. Arthur gets it away. After the 50-yard boomer as last time, this is returnable also. And Richardson tumbles ahead to the 29. The guys from down under can really boot it. But Josh Hoover's coming back out to lead TCU. Next week, start your Saturday strong. One of the early season national championship favorites, number three, Ohio State. They host the Thundering Herd Marshall in Columbus. It all starts with big noon kickoff, and it's Ohio State Marshall only on Fox. Love it. Mark Ingram had a big one today. Yeah, the crew is in Madison, Wisconsin for Alabama against the Badgers. That is, do not adjust your set. That is a real picture. That is a Chamber of Commerce shot right there. It's a Horned Frogs colored sky. Yeah. And midway through the second quarter, TCU has not been stopped on offense yet. Oh. Little pitch from Williams out to Besh. And what looked like no gain turns into eight yards. <laughs> That's a little hitch and pitch. This is a little screen and pitch. Almost blown up. Great job by Savion getting it out to Besh and trying to get, get something started. A creativity. Now Cook is stuck in the hole, but bounces off the hit from Barr, and he's down to the ground after get all, all that. Did all the work and then tackled himself. That's the thing, though, again, man. This guy just does not go down. He's not, not a huge, huge dude, but plays big. All right, here we go again on third down. You get it? Are you going to uh, announce her jinx him again? Perfect so far. Well, it was third and eight. It was third and <laughs> ten. Third and ten. This is way too close. Yeah, third and two. <laughs> Ted Roof does up here on defense. Showing a four-man rush and a zone look right now. Seven to seven on third down. And Hoover has it knocked away. Incomplete. First third down stop tonight with Braden Marshall in coverage yep. for UCF. Great job. All eyes on it. They read the quick game. Great eyes by Braden Marshall. Breaking it up from J.P. Richardson. You said it. That's that's inside Huge. the comfort zone. Under exactly. Way too close. Yeah. Third and two. Now if you're a Central Florida fan, a UCF fan, this is the man you want to get the ball in his hands as a returner. And it's Xavier Townsend back to get it. And retreating. And he is popped at the end of it. A single fair catch. I am shocked there's not a flag. Wow. They will confer here. There's 100% a fair catch signal. We'll take a look and bring in Mike Pereira on this one. There's Xavier. Oh, yeah. There's your fair catch signal. Dave Kamara just comes in and bulldozes. We'll confirm with Mike here. They're still talking about it on the field. The back judge and the side judge are too involved in covering that play. The white half is David Alvarez. 
There is no foul on the play for kick catch interference. First down. So UCF will have it backed up. College Football on Fox is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Built to serve. UCF, the one touchdown scoring drive started way back here after a pre-snap penalty. Marched it down. Jefferson, the quarterback hit R.J. Harvey coming out of the backfield. Chasing 14 points with six to go until halftime. And it's Harvey sneaking through a window of that second level of the defense for nine yards on first down. It's the base in the Malzahn system, a little counter play. That time is just a give all the way, no read involvement for K.J. Jefferson. Get your guy the rock and get it started. And here's the tempo. Back-to-back -back quick carries, and Kamara, who had the hit on special teams, plays another big one. That one was clean. This one, a little questionable on the, on the kick-catch interference. No call. Accident coming in. Eyes up. Eyes up. Strike. That is a clean shot right there. If there's one thing that Abe Kamara has been the last couple of years for TCU, it has been a guy that can bring the boom. Remember the college football playoff semifinal yes. game? He hit Ronnie Bell of Michigan down on the goal line. Save a touchdown. And a penny boon for the first time out of the backfield. That's their big bruising back that they got from Toledo. And Kamara, Kamara making another play there, coming outside in to get Boone to the ground. Boone ran for 1,400 yards in the Mid-American Conference last year, and this is where he's at his best after contact. And he has a first down spinning off the hip. Yeah, great little spin move. You said it, 232, the Toledo product. They take, again, they are so deep. These are four starters, really, at tailback on this team. Boone still learning this offense, getting his first good run of the night. UCF fans were so excited because they knew they were bringing back R.J. Harvey. And then you have the MAC Offensive Player of the Year who yep. ran for over 1,000 yards. Yep. Has a chance to be even more of a dy dynamic run game than it was last year. Yeah, got to got to spell Harvey. And then these other guys are just slightly different players. Let's Gus Malzahn deploy them in different ways. TCU fans happy there. Scud James, a physical finish, bring it to the ground. back in there and bouncing out of the scrum for a first down so they hit him with the freight train and then back to the sweet feet of rj harvey first down after 14 yards does have sweet feet again a former quarterback at virginia great job pressing it squared let's keep that a little bit tight off there might split him but again a very very important drive there's offensive coordinator tim harris jr works very closely with gus malzahn on this offense now back after a year at Miami. And a timeout, six plays into this drive. Timeout, UCF, their first, first of the half, 30 seconds in length. And they might need a breather because they've been doing nothing but running the ball on this drive, getting some oxygen ahead of the seventh snap. Week two, the NFL kicks off on Fox. Derek Carr leads the Saints against Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. Or you get the Rams against the Cardinals with Kyler Murray. Check the game in your area only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. It's a big week in this state, close by where the Cowboys play tomorrow, but also in college football, Red Raiders put up 66 today. On North Texas, Air Force and Baylor on FS1 and then it. Kevin, Tom, and the gang calling that game right tomorrow. Down the street, yeah. There's always, always good things happening in the Republic when it's football season. Friday night football highlights, nothing like it here in the great state of Texas. Birthright to love this game in this state. Yes, she loves it. Will we see a pass on this drive <laughs> for UCF? Penny Boone is back in there as the back, and so far, seven plays, all runs. Seven Morris at the bottom of your screen got his helmet ripped off. Tight end for UCF for the short gain for Boone. Yeah, Evan Morris with no penalty call there. He has to leave the game. He was arguing, hey, this, this thing doesn't fall off by itself. Had a little with a couple of, of the officials. 
And Gus Malzahn and company are saying, hey, if we get four yards and a you know, chunk every time, they're going to keep on grinding. Eventually the cloud of dust comes. Yes. And Harvey and Boone have been heavily featured. Richardson in the backfield. This goes to Townsend with the window dressing. And Townsend. He's a speed guy. Shows a little thunder First getting out of bounds. Bringing it to Broughton right there who fit him up. Again, great job getting Townsend on the ground before it's a first down on a big play. That time, a little counter reverse out of the best balls on playbook. Not quite in the range of Boomer yet. Yeah, four down territory right here, 237 and ticking. Third and three, got the two minute timeout in their pocket coming up. Nine plays, nine runs. Jefferson, that is almost like a fullback dive yeah, on third down and three with how big he is. And, oh, he's, he's getting pushed down to the bottom of that pile. Yeah, they get a lot of bodies to the ball and take an exception. Certainly the guys up front will run to the defense. we got a late flag. It's, this is going to be on TCU. And it's going to be a, a more, look like a verbal thing than anything else. He didn't like Bud Clark, just a little extra action there. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 21, 15 yard penalty and automatic first down. So this is what he said, and this comes way after the play. That is his first like of the it's not because of this. They, they break this up. He gets separated, kind of goes back behind the, the rest of his guys here. You can see David Alvarez and company stepping in there. And he's, he's just staying right there. I bet. I, I said something I shouldn't have. I got cut. But again, like a technical foul, if he gets another one, he's ejected. It's done, right? Two unsportsmanlike calls on one player in the game. They're done. And it's the first on Clark. And we'll get another timeout. This one taken by TCU on defense. Timeout. TCU. Their first of the game. 30 so seconds in length. Just ahead of the two minute timeout. New to college football this year. Called timeout by TCU. You've got some overreactions <laughs> for us. Some health rich hot takes. These are my forced overreactions. We'll say this right. You know, UNLV playoff bound, right? Kansas 1 and 2. UNLV undefeated. K State. Makes some people mad watching these two teams. The team to beat in the Big 12. And just start clearing out room in Lincoln for the Heisman of Dylan Raiola. Was, was that your thought when you put the K-State thing on there? Was UCF and TCU fans are watching? Sure. Let's, let's mix it up a well, little bit. Chris Klopp's doing a great job. That, that team looked, looked pretty darn good last night under control, but man, could have could have ended that game a lot earlier. Avery Johnson playing well for Gators. Great defense yeah. last night. Are you, uh, you going to join... Uh, Nick Wright or Colin Cowherd, one of those guys. <laughs> I don't, I don't spit out yeah. some fire takes. I, I, it, believe me, everyone knows I, I know nothing about nothing. So this is kind of a free play here. 204 with that team, that mandated timeout coming, two minute timeout to play free here for the back draw. And Jefferson keeps it on the <laughs> ground and barrels his way ahead. You hold your breath. Yeah, he was as a defender. Gone right there. There was nothing else behind him. Two-minute timeout in the first half from Fort Worth. Points expected. Points delivered. 21-7. Y'all ready for me yet? Well, yo, are y'all ready for me yet? Well, yo, are y'all ready for me yet? Well, here I go. Here I go. Fox College Football is sponsored by Pedialyte. Great for kids and adults. Hydrate and feel better fast. Dante Culpepper. Once on the cover of Madden. Blake Ball is right there. And ended his career at UCF in 2014. Got this program going. KJ Jefferson trying to be the next guy up after transferring from Arkansas. RJ Harvey now, Wildcat spot. And the former quarterback takes the direct snap. And weaving his way, and he's cut from behind by Deal. Almost broke it. He's a yard short of the first down. Yeah, almost broke it. One more down. bounce. Take a look at this from behind. True counter with a big German pull. Who pulling? 
And Harvey setting up a third and one and a half. This is an interesting spot here for Gus Malzahn. This is where he might reach into that playbook with one of his play action red zone shots. They were walking through a bunch of stuff in pregame. Let's see what he dials up here. You remember, TCU gets the ball out of halftime. So a critical third down for UCF. Chasing two scores with the Horn Frogs. Touching the ball first in the timeout. Yeah, he's going to just tie, tie out, time out there. Play clock running down, ran down the sideline. Timeout. UCF. They're second in the half. 30 seconds in length. All right, before this third down, let's go to Mike Hill on what's coming up at the State Farm Halftime Show. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime, top-ranked Georgia with a tough road test at Kentucky. Their beatdown in Michigan, Texas looks to remain hot versus UTSA. And ninth-ranked Oregon gets back on track looking good against Oregon State. Don and Mark, we'll see you guys at the half. Mike, thank you very much. So an expansion of some of your overreactions from this week coming up at the half. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Mike always looking good. Sure always. is. Okay, so... Big third down because TCU's getting the ball out of halftime for UCF. You think this might be the spot? Gus Melzahn finally throws the ball in this truck. This is where he's going to know right now. He's going, hey, I'm, I'm going to have to score touchdowns today. I, I, you know, my kicker had that, that issue earlier. This is where he might go to his, his quarterback run read between the power of the counter and the you know, quarterback heavy run system. Or reach into that, yeah, one polar, two polar shot game and try to get behind. You know, TCU is going to be very down to stop at KJ Jefferson right here because you have to be. And this drive for UCF started at their own 12 yard line. They have not thrown a single pass, and this is the 12th play of the drive. And on this third and two, they keep it with what's works, and RJ Harvey is right at the marker and has. What appears to be a first down. Yep, just going back bread and butter zone read right there. Reading the edge here. It ends up being the blitzer off the edge that time. With the Camara became the read. Good push up front, first down. One time out inside a minute to go with that clock winding. Fake to Richardson. Jefferson finally looking to pass on this drive. Running out of time. Jefferson is swarmed. He did get back past the line of scrimmage. Cooper McDonald got him, but UCF sees that clock start to drip to a half a minute left. Yeah, it's just locked up. There's nowhere to go. Play action, try to get back to that wheel route concept that they had for the touchdown to R.J. Harvey. That time the Horned Frogs had it locked down, but Clark on the scene. The clock has wound down to 17 seconds with all the substituting, and now UCF. Timeout. UCF, the third and final timeout of the half, 60 seconds in lane. Oh, they lost 20 yeah. seconds there. So what they're doing, again, if UCF subs, then TCU has the right to match, and he's just saying, hey, they're doing it way too slow, they're making us take too long, and that's, you know, that, that's the game. As soon as he subs, that's why Gus Ball's on for the longest time. He said, he said, hey, I'd like to play a season with 11 guys on the field on offense. But as soon as they sub, and you can see it right there, Montgomery's coming in, 22 off the sideline. Now TCU can match. They immediately do that. You see the center judge holding the staff right over there. They're doing that correctly. So you see that. Yep. you got to take that timeout yes. sooner, right? Yeah. Or not so. Or not it so. Like, yeah, it looked like maybe the guy, the, the, the running back, who was RJ Harvey, who was in the game, I think, you know, tapped out there and okay. went out. And again, that's a, a consideration, certainly, for, for Coach Balzon. Okay, take me inside the mind of a play caller now. You don't have any timeouts. The run game has been awesome yes. on this drive, but you got to throw, yeah. right? Yeah, it's got to be a touchdown or out of bounds. Those are your, your only options right here. The only, you know, you're right on the edge there at 17 seconds. That's kind of a last-second field goal, depending on how you work your speed, speed field goal type of situation. Miles Montgomery, the back. Second and goal to the end zone, incomplete. Right in betw between Townsend and Hudson. He stops the clock with 12 seconds. Yeah, you can see Kobe Hudson right there say, hey, my bad, I'm supposed to come on this shallow. And that is a clean look. He just crosses... On the back side, you see Obi eyes are in coverage, and he says, hey, KJ, it's me. He's open. Ooh, yeah, he is. 
And TCU uses their second timeout. TCU, they're second and a half, 30 seconds in length. Kicking off the Big 12 here. This is going back to the COVID era. Oh, yeah. Streaming Tiger Kings. Tiger Kings. LSU, Memphis, and Missouri. All good days for the Tigers. That was an unbelievable cut, comeback in many ways in that LSU game. Whew. Tough times for Mike Norvell, former co worker staff member with Gus Balzon back in the Tulsa days in Missouri. Rolling. 1976, Bobby Bowden's first year at Florida State. That's how long it had been since Memphis beat the Seminoles. Yes, yeah, so right here again, it's that same situation. You cannot end up with the ball inbounds short of the goal line if you're a UCF Knight. Has to be thrown into the end zone or catch and run out of bounds to have time for the field goal. Sonny Dyke's team has only been stopped once on offense in the first half. Their defense trying to come up with a goal to go stand before halftime. To the end zone, back shoulder, and incomplete. Broughton and Hudson came together, and with seven seconds left, UCF has to settle for a field goal. It is just straight up a one-on-one goal line fade here. Hudson gives up way too much ground. Runs the sideline, Broughton. A physical guy, handsy guy, did a nice job. Had a couple of penalties earlier in the year. That's a nice, nice coverage right there. And Boomer missed from 47 and on a ball that we barely got over the line. And second shot in this game is blocked. Scud James to save three points for the Horn Frogs. Lamaria, they call him Scud, just a straight speed rush. Great job extending, presenting his hands to the kick perfectly at the block point. Isn't going to rough the kicker. Wow, that is fast. And one second left here. We'll see what Sonny Dykes and company does, but this place will be going wild at halftime. Cheering the Horn Frogs off the field. TCU was backpedaling on that drive. Gus Malzahn and that offense were running straight downhill, but Sonny Dykes and the defense for TCU come up with the stop. And you can't help but think about the sub. The, the substitution before the second down play that took 20 seconds yep, away yep, and shrunk the playbook. Absolutely. 100% correct. Lose the timeout, lose the, the, the opportunities. At least, you know, KJ Jefferson, that was, you know, you know, legitimate opportunity for his guy to make a catch in the end zone. Just better coverage and then just issues in the kicking game. We talked about the special teams being an X factor. we got to get that solved here at halftime. You know, Fort Worth has been alive all week. Hoping for a run like 2022, a good start in their first Big 12 half. Let's send you back to Mike Hill in the L.A. studios. Uh, hey, Central Florida averaging 51. clinic for TCU on offense in that first half. They lead it and the Big 12 opener by 14 points. And are getting the ball coming out of halftime here in Fort Worth. Glad you're back with us. Mark Helfrich. I'm Connor Onion. Let's take a look at our first half moments brought to you by AT&T Business. Savion Williams all over the field in the first half. And the dude is handling his business. Limited opportunities. Three, only three catches and two of the best you're going to see this week. That's a poster. I don't know if they still make posters, but maybe an Instagram post or something that was unbelievable and then great design here watch the motion create a one-on-one -on -one situation no chance here foot in the ground and then the ball's behind him Hoover throws behind him and all he does is just the Ole hip unbelievable body control 
finger, Paul, everything. Good. That, so good. Unbelievable. Which one do you like better? I, I, I'm equal opportunity touchdown. Any, anything where the official puts his hands in the air, I'm loving it. Spoken like a true offensive coordinator. That next level moment sponsored by AT&T Business. Reliability for your business is our business. So not only the lead for Sonny Dykes in TCU, but a goal line stand before halftime, which means yeah, goal line go down. Goal line stop. To, yeah. Punctuated by that block field goal. This place on Parents Parents Weekend was dialed in, and they're trying to file back in here to rally this finish. Our very own Rob Stone is a TCU parent. Try to get, try to get him up here. See if he's, see if he's capable. It's great parenting. Work at the Big Dune, and then making his way down here for a, another great game. Fresh off the jet from Madison earlier today. Our first half check-in sponsored by Allstate. You're in good hands with Allstate. Well, it's gone how we thought from a, where the rush, rushing yards were distributed. All UCF. The pass yards basically all TCU, but the scoreboard all TCU. Two blocked field goals on the night as well. A bunch of basically wasted yards in those two blocked field goal drives. And Josh Hoover, the quarterback for TCU, who they said we want less Brett Favre, more Tom Brady. Spread it around to six different wide receivers in that first half. On his way to 170 yards. First play pass for Williams, and a flag comes out. One you almost expected him to catch after the action we just showed you. Adams is saying, what do I got to do, man? This guy's unbelievable. Brandon Adams in coverage here. Well, outside leverage has some inside help. And that's a good call, that left hand pulling down the bicep of Savion Williams. His left hand unable Pastor to get to the ball. Defense, Defense zero, zero, zero. 15 yards penalty, penalty and automatic. automatic. First down. First down. Uh, a matchup that is going to be really fun to watch in the second half. Adams, you got to be aware of his length. Yes. Saw what Williams can do, high point in the ball. Yeah, that's a big corner, 6-3. Both, both corners are physical, but <laughs> look at the height. Mac McWilliams is like 5'9", 5'10". Ben Hart is much taller. A five-inch difference between the corners. A little throwback screen, and Cook had space to run, but dropped it. It was a little, little urgent there. Eyes to the tuck there on that finish, and he saw what you saw. Watch the screen set up away from the half roll. That nice little design, a couple linemen out in front. Big shed by Braden Marshall. Eyes a little bit away from that catch. Eyes all the way to the tuck, then go do your thing away from an explosive instead incomplete so Hoover to work on second down and a quick pop sets up third down and medium out to Curtis as tight end been exceptional these third and long situations just great chemistry you see what Sonny Dykes is talking about Josh Hoover just has a great chemistry with all of these players these skilled players have been elite tonight started seven of seven on third down Almost 100 yards through the air on third down alone for Hoover. And again, back to back completions to Chase Curtis. And a first down on third down. For that's, that's a great job by Chase Curtis, stealing the zone coverage, catching it, and immediately knifing vertically to ba really barely get the ball by a lean. Or get the first down by a lean. Back-to-back -back weeks, TCU playing in front out of halftime. They came back and beat Stanford in their opening game. UCF wire-to-wire -wire dominance against New Hampshire, then Sam Houston on their way to 2-0. Tonight it gets real. First game in the Big 12. One Frogs trying to go up three scores. Deep drop for Hoover, taking a deep shot. The life of the party.
Hardy, Jack Besh. He's number 18 right there. Lives just a little lean corner and then a high angle post. A perfectly thrown ball from Josh Hoover. That's a way to start it off. Pose it up. You earned it. And holding the kick just to make sure that he broke the plane with possession. And it was just confirmed. And they'll chop it ready for play for kick. Uh, Bash now has more yards in three games this year than he had all of last year. A budding star for TCU, who Kendall Bryles, the offensive coordinator, thinks is going to make a team in the NFL after playing here at TCU. Hoover to Besh, 50-yard pop. Horn Frogs coming up aces in the Big 12 opener. Football is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Protect the stuff you love with Renner's Insurance. And by Hampton by Hilton. Hilton for the stay. How good was Andy Dahl in the Horn Frogs uniform? He would be loving this as Josh Hoover stands in, almost taking the shot from Lee Hunter. Cam Cook in protection and a great finish. And the pose from Jack Besh. And he goes a little, is it, who's it, Rodan? Is that the, who's the thicker? Rodan? It was pensive either way. <laughs> so from the shot of the Red Rocket to Josh Hooper. Any, uh, any nicknames cooking in your brain after what we've seen from him tonight? Let's clean it up. Uh, I don't know what's that. So he's a back here. Clean the ball. Clean the ball. I dig it. I'll give it to you. <laughs> All right, so K.J. Jefferson in this U UCF offense. Yeah, this is muscular territory right here to keep him touching distance. But we've seen the big play. Capability, possibilities. That two drives, ending a block, field goals. Their lone score, the wheel route to R.J. Harvey, who's in the backfield with him right now. they got to get something cooking. Got Smalls on and company. At some point, it's got to happen through the air, right? Yes. Down three scores. TCU's offense showing no signs of slowing down. And they do start the air, taking a shot to Hudson on the back shoulder. Contested grab for Hudson. You talk about unlocking the passing game. That's a good beginning for the Knights. 6 1 200. Kobe Hudson against to Travis Broughton. 5 11, 195. That is great coverage. A really good throw from KJ Jefferson and a great drive start. And back to the edge for RJ Harvey. Jefferson and Hudson have been close on a couple of these the past few weeks. Great job finishing it. Uh, that, yeah, that is clinic coverage. I'm just Travis Broughton, and we've just been joined by the great Rob Stone and his son in the in the booth. We wanted to see that throw in connection to Kobe Hudson. So back to back first downs for UCF, and Harvey busts into the second level. And this drive moving downhill for UCF on three straight plays. Got a defender right there. It's Caleb Fox. Fox yeah. Went back down and tried to catch his breath. Again, must score territory. Again, the second and short. This is this is. Feels like a four-down territory situation, especially given their their kicking kicking situation. It's a hot night here in Fort Worth. Maybe a little cramping for Big Caleb Fox. 93 degrees at kickoff. With the feel of it being much hotter here in Fort Worth. KJ KJ feeling hot on this drive for them. Not, not the, the highest of bars tonight. You can see it right there. It feels like temperature 97. Every bit of that as we were down on the field in, in pregame. Back-to-back first downs, then a nine-yard run for Harvey. Three plays on this drive. 
This is Boone. First down, Knights. Boone is the thick change up again. 232, the Toledo product, as you said, a very, very productive player in the back. RJ back in there. You see the three, three by one to the boundary here. Gus Ball's on three receivers in the boundary. The lone receiver to the field is Pittman. Back in there, patient, out to the edge. And he's run out by Devin Beal. Devin Beal, UCF, with the big pop to Hudson, then right back to where they were at the end of the half, running right at TCU's defense. Yeah, they don't want to get a drop back passing game, but as you said, they got to make those plays up somehow. Play action pass is, is always their mode of choice, staying in these second and manageable situations. That is the picture of inbounds. Yes, exactly. With the play selection tonight. UCF. They do throw here to the end zone. Jefferson is going to that matchup again, and the flag comes out. Broughton and Hudson tangled up earlier on the drive. Marker is down. You see here, again, the same matchup. Broughton on Hudson, physical on physical. That's your too much by 13 there. Number 13, 15 yards penalty, penalty and automatic. And automatic. First pass down. Well, he get his hands into the face there too. Early physical contact doesn't allow Cody Hudson to come back and get it. He said he got off his face. They got you. Broad is just that guy. He's, he's a guy that's going to do that. He's going to play on the edge on every play. He's one of those corners that, that you know, Gus Ball's on probably saw like call for interference on every play, but they're not going to call it on every play. Definitely something that was brought to the official attention yes. from no the UCF side. No doubt. You know, Broughton was terrific in the week one win for TCU. He was their best defensive player that week. So inside the red zone with Boone, they go to their big back. And Jamel Johnson in the gang for TCU. Stack it up. Nothing there. Second down. This is just going to be whatever they're liking is what they think their best options are in the red zone. Four times right there. So you got a, basically a zone read, maybe a free return yeah, the field to try to take some of those hits off of KJ Jefferson right there. Would you throw it down here for UCF? No. No? No. It's not in this area that, you know, their wheelhouse is all the quarterback run stuff. And again, you know, manipulate the defense with that quarterback, give it to the big back on the last play. RJ Hardy, he's back in there now. Best quarterback run, power lead. It is Harvey. Ran away from Deal, sneaking toward the goal line. They've got him down at the half yard line. Yep, so that's back to back now inside zones with no read. So they're trying to bang. Again, body blow, body blow. They get both, both uh, tight ends in there. Pittman, Morris working hard. The misses a Inside spot. The one. Gus Melzahn likes R.J. Harvey out of a direct snap spot. Yes. Looks like that's what they're doing right now. From the half-yard line, it is Harvey taking the direct snap. And straight ahead to their star back in a touchdown for R.J. Harvey. Goes to Harvey. So UCF responds to the TCU touchdown back within two scores. You called a great job here. The R.J. Harvey designed run. They're a little unbalanced with the tight end at tackle. And then Pittman and Morris work at the back edge, the back door. And Harvey finishes to Pater the hard way. He had the receiving touchdown in the first half. He has UCF's first touchdown on the ground. Start the second half. This has not been automatic tonight, and it's not again. Two field goals blocked. Now with PAT, it's Bud Clark in on this one for the Horn Frogs. A real issue right now for UCF. Can they trust the kicking game if this game is tight? No, is the answer to that. College football is sponsored by Edward Jones. Scott Frost and 
UCF in 2017. They were the Peach Bowl champs going to a New Year's Six Bowl. And the great news for you, UCF and TCU fans, <laughs> yeah, this year exactly. they don't have to worry about being snubbed. You win all your games, you win, you're in the playoff. You're in. 2017, of course, the year that UCF claimed the mythical national championship. They beat Auburn in the bowl game. Orlando Auburn beat just interrupted right now by calling it a mythical. <laughs> They claimed it. Not everybody claims it. <laughs> but transitive property. Exactly, exactly. They beat Auburn. He, 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 Auburn beat yeah, Alabama. Yeah. And UCF was undefeated. And, and speaking of transitive properties. Yes. I'm, I'm going to tell people about Ram Trucks. You good with that? Yes. <laughs> All right. Tonight's broadcast is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Love built Ram. to serve. Now, now do you want to give us a math lesson? Yes. It, it, the math is... Three, three missed kicks. Now you get your, your two-point plays ready for the rest of the night for Gus Malzahn and company. Should they be fortunate enough to find the end zone? Tough night. That's just a, that's just a confidence killer for that whole sideline. And they'll, they'll have a different play going for it. Obviously, they, they need at least one of them. It's a touchdown off the board for UCF. Oh, yeah. Two field goals and a PAT. Seven points off the board. So two-score game instead of a one-score game. And Hoover... Richardson in this offense for TCU have only been stopped on one drive tonight with another three-headed monster receiver. We talked about the big three going in. McAllister has joined the fray tonight. See, where he's just making the absolute most of, of his three receptions on five targets. And Besh from the watch. Back-to-back throws to Richardson. First down for TCU, and he keeps rumbling. Richardson, the slot receiver, knocking helmets off. He says, hey, you guys are talking about me. Watch this. Pressure. Defensive coordinator Ted Roos says, I got to amp up the pressure here. Josh Hoover finds J.P. Richardson a physical, fun finisher. Unless you're on the receiving end of this finish. Watch him square up. Great ball security here at the finish right at the end. And the truck to Quadric Bullard. Richardson's always been a guy that's defied the stereotype yes. of the speedy slot receiver that's a little bit undersized. Loves to hit you. Showed it on that play for 22 yards. And off tackles. Another big play for TCU. Jeremy Payne with a first down. He has 21 yards. Payne in space. Watch me. The point of attack right here by Besh might have gotten away with a hole right there at the end of it. But no flag, no foul. Payne, first to ten. Sonny Dyke says TCU still searching for that number two back. Outside of Cam Cook, really likes Payne. Here's Earl, got a little loose with the ball there as he stumbles his way ahead for a couple of yards. That was the uh, old lost substitute loan. Loads some wing action. <laughs> try to walk him off the field. The coach is ridiculing whether they should stab the ball to try to sneak a catch to JoJo. Brandon Marshall. The nickel for UCF down on the field for the Knights. Again, it's just underneath 100 degrees still right now. Feels like 98. Gus Malzahn and company thought this would, thought that would be to their benefit. You know, talking about the humidity, the heat that they constantly play in. We're talking about the Texas humidity is different. Ted Rufus, defensive coordinator who came from Oklahoma. Yep. He's like, I, I don't have to watch <laughs> what I eat as much yeah. now because the weight comes off pretty quick in Florida. We're used to this stuff. Hoover and this TCU offense marching once again. Four touchdowns on six drives. One of those drives they didn't score. They kneeled down before the half. They've been very creative. They got a rose tonight. Right now, he's not in there. Got a different personnel group going. Sugar huddle action. Jeremy Payne stays in as the running back. After his starring role in a touchdown drive last week, his second touch for Payne, and he's dragged down from behind. Open field tackle for Tennyson, saved the first down. It's the Kendall Bryles one game that we saw the first play of the game, then the pump for the Savior. Williams touchdown, another just 
Just a drive starter feel and play. Perimeter pass. Effectively run game. It's been a lot of third and eight and third and ten in that eight for nine on third down night for TCU. This is the action in the post corner to McAllister for the touchdown. Slightly motion. Swings it out for Richardson. Busy drive for Richardson. A couple of maneuvers and another first down. He can hammer you and he can shake you. Richardson moves the chain. You are exactly about fun. A guy to gadget with. But the key to this on the perimeter now is blocking. All these unselfish guys. Dominique Johnson here on the perimeter. Just has to finish his guy to let J.P. Richardson square up and make that last guy miss. Good recovery from Ethan Barr. It's a blood and guts wide receiver right there. J.P. Richardson had the big hit for first down earlier. First down, TCU again. And dangerously close to that ball. Ending up in the lap of the Knights. Ethan Barr with hands on it. Yeah, they're trying to fit it into a tight, tight window. That's one I think Josh Hoover will grade himself. They're trying to run a little fit play off of Ethan Barr. So basically get him to fit that run play, which he does. You can see his eyes going, oh, shoot. You're trying to play action pass it and dump it to the big guy Dabney behind me. The eighth play of this drive is to Payne with the burst ahead. We'll make it more manageable on third down. That throw for Hoover. More in that Brett Favre category <laughs> that, that they wanted to get him away from. Andrew, defensive player. Ethan Barr is down with Hoover and TCU in the red zone. Time out on the field. Back to Fort Worth after this. Well, the attitude for TCU this year is loose and free compared to the pressure they felt last year. Saw the guys dancing, fans are loving it. Football back in Fort Worth and Kind of an attitude of why not us after disappointing five and seven year last year. Absolutely, just a lot of, you know, similar for both teams in this game. A lot of one score games, a lot of tough, tight losses. And Sonny Dykes just, he looks relaxed, refreshed, confident. And with his many playmakers, and again, with that guy playing the way he has, I get it. Third down inside the red zone for Hoover. And target, a little bit outside. And off the hands of Dabney is tight end, and it's fourth down for TCU. And they got away with one there. They missed an opportunity. Dabney, just a little option route, just presents himself. It's a little bit of an odd turn for that kind of Normally expect him to turn to the outside, and maybe that's what Josh Hoover was, was throwing. Either way, a few goal opportunity here on fourth and six. And for Kyle Lemmerman, who replaces Griffin Kell this season. 31-yard attempt. After each drive down here tonight has ended in a touchdown. This one ends in a field goal. TCU stretches it back to a three-score game in the second half. Still smell the brisket from the pregame tailgate. And guess what? Big noon show today. Rob Stone was there. Yes. Him and his son Cam. The hardest, the hardest working serving, man in show show business. Serving as barbecue. Get up, coach. Hold on. Get in there. Get That's, a big bite of that. Get a big bite of that, coach. Oh, All right. Well, your three meat, no veg. <laughs> Love it. The, uh... The cowboy caviar, did you get a, a taste of that? You want, you want to, I have a mouthful. Rob, Rob, a Rob's, of hand. Rob's, what's going on here? <laughs> Rob's feed you. I better feed you too. It just got weird. <laughs> that has onions. Delicious. What was the best? Morning, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. 
What do we got? Like, this is weird. This is an into the textbook. Uh, love it. Mm. What was better, Dubai or the brisket here in Fort Worth? Brisket, oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> wow. Mm. That was good. Burn ends on fire. Will KJ Jefferson and UCF back on the field chasing three scores. Remember the the kicking issues showed up again last drive. So it's it's go for a territory the rest of the night, right? Absolutely, absolutely. They're they're you know obviously time and score 447 down 18, and then you compound that with the uh, kicking issues. Hopefully, Gus Malzahn has a couple more answers on that clipboard. We did it mostly on the ground last drive before having their PAT got block. Here. They got a chance here with Hudson. Another deep connection to Kobe Hudson. This is like a one-on-one -on -one drill between Travis Broughton and Kobe Hudson back and forth and back and forth. A little tug on the hip. A little tug on the right arm at the end of it, but Kobe Hudson says and one from KJ Jefferson. 45 yard hit back to Hudson, juggling catch and a touchdown. Just what UCF needed a quick strike. Just what the Knights wanted to see. This is a true RPO reading that front side defender. That's how Jamel Johnson fit up the run, opened up the space behind for the skinny post, and flip a coin. Here's a kick. They will kick it, and they made it. Kick is good. Good for him. So redemptive for Colton Boomer, the yes. place kicker for UCF, but that was all Jefferson to Hudson on that track. Jefferson to Hudson. Here's the. Big choke play. Broughton with a little hold, and here's the RPO post. Bread and butter down here in the red zone again. Two vacates that space. He knows the Gus Malzahn recipe. And two replaces two in space. And they're still in it. Hmm. Recipe, way to pay off. Oh, internet. recipe. I got you. I got still got stuff in my teeth right now. Well, Gus Malzahn and KJ Jefferson had that drive before halftime where they barely put the ball through the air. That is a stress relief for them to get Kobe Hudson stretching the defense. Yeah, chunk play pass, chunk play pass for the touchdown and the extra point. It's a huge swing of momentum. Scott James back deep for TCU. And Boomer blasts one up over his head. Now, next Saturday, huge day of football on Fox, as every Saturday is. It starts with big noon Saturday. Will Howard in action for Ohio State against the Thundering Herd and Marshall. Utah, Oklahoma State, Big 12, top 25. And we'll be in Boulder, Colorado. Our crew will be for Colorado against Baylor. It all starts with big noon Saturday on Fox with our friend in the booth, Rob Stone. Rob Stone. The real, the real star of the show. Chef slash server, <laughs> yeah. Rob Stone. Hoover's been special tonight, huh? Yes, he has. See if they can dial up uh, Ted Roof to a little Zoe coverage. Patch pass starter. On the roll, Hoover with a darts. Bash. Hit him right between the numbers for a first down. Nice throw. Nice timing here by Josh Hoover. Watch the outside defender. You see 13 a white trigger on that route. That opens up that space. Great timing for Josh Hoover. 20-yard pop on first down. And Cook on the ground. He's wrestled to the turf by Ricky Barber. He turned to you after that last drive for TCU. And you said, more, more. It's got to be more. UCF. Isn't going to stop scoring in this game. No. No, they got to got to hold serve here with this TCU offense. It's been hot all night. And a flare out to the perimeter for Earl, and that could have been a much bigger play, but falls down for a third down. 
great design here. This is one yard or less beyond the line of scrimmage. It's behind the line of scrimmage, ideally. And you see a block by Dabney Nine and Jack Besh, number 18 on the perimeter, getting that started. Here's Besh coming outside in, doesn't. Right, no sort of blindside block situation. Good, good job right there, good discipline. And Lawrence couldn't get all the way home. Him and Kelly came together, and that's tipped around and incomplete. Hoover avoided the pressure of the two ends, and fourth down comes up. Yeah, he's a little more athletic, I think, that people give him credit for. Great job avoiding the rush inside. And then this is just trying to make a play down the sideline, watching eyes downfield, feels that. Pressure coming from Lawrence, gets outside. Ethan Cry out the top of TCU. Had a chance there to make that play. <laughs> that ball attacks man, film at 11 right there for Camp Cook. Ball caught Cook. Yes. Lucky on the ricochet, man. That came back in play square. Bounces through for a touchback. UCF, led by quarterback KJ Jefferson. He's been looking forward to this road game for months now. What game are you looking forward to or something? On the road, I would say uh, TCU for sure. Uh, just going against my old uh, offense coordinator and just knowing that TCU was, and when I was little, was my dream school. So going back to that place. From Mississippi, but TCU was his dream oh, school. And now trying to break some hearts. He's broken hearts in a sold-out <laughs> stadium before. Had you know, a great conversation with Kendall Bryles about their relationship. And man, he 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 lit up, but he also was like, oh yeah, he's coming to get us. And facing his former offensive coordinator, Kendall Bryles, the TCU play caller. Jefferson handing off on first down. The best years for K.J. Jefferson at Arkansas were when Kendall Bryle, Bryles, now calling the plays for TCU, was his coordinator in Fayetteville. And Kendall Bryles, he did still spin it. I saw him thrown out there in pregame with the quarterbacks. Got it. You don't want to embarrass the quarterbacks in pregame. Pat and go. Hold up. Well, as he told us, it's embarrassing that we're huddling. Uh, so yeah. that's rock bottom for him. <laughs> to the perimeter for Townsend, and here comes Hodges. Great job by James. You'll see six coming outside in from the corner spot. They're trying to rally with Hodges. Great job of, of vicing that ball carrier. Hodges inside out. James outside in. Result, third and seven. So Jefferson trying to keep the ball out of the hands of his former play caller, Kendall Bryles. Facing a third down and seven. After the loss of four, keeping it on the ground. Explosive run with a big bowling ball finish at the end for Harvey. Absolutely punishing run. Dust ball's on staple right here. Third and seven. Just a little third zone. With a slider got right into that pressure. Great timing on the call. Oh man, that, this guy makes people look bad. He's got, think about all these guys as they bring it. I mean, you know, the tight ends we talked about, all these backs, no matter the size, bring it. Then you got the 250-pound exclamation point at, at you know quarterback, and everybody gets kind of on their heels and reacted back. Sometimes you gotta take a charge. The feeling in the stadium has changed. Yes. Quick score, UCF. They got to stop and some unease. Starting to build late in this third quarter. And Montgomery taking Johnson for a ride out to midfield on what could be the final play of the third quarter. Let's see what Gus does here. Miles Montgomery, this guy, another physical slasher type of back. And it's going to be the end of the quarter. TCU scored on their first touch out of halftime, but it's down to an 11 point game.
<laughs> Glad you've stuck around with us. Looks like TCU was We're going to have a great one. Right? Just a train. train. We're going to have a great one. There's a lot going on in that quarter break right there. Bunch of those people on the field. Hypnotoad dancing. Oh, Hypnotoad everywhere. And Connor Runny and Mark Elfrich, our entire Fox crew. Start of the fourth quarter with UCF on the march. Close to a first down with Penny Boone. Looks like, and they got it. Yep, looks like that front foot spot from both officials was just enough. Penny Boone, the hammer, the 232-pound hammer in the backfield arsenal of Gus Malzahn. A tone-setting type night for the Big 12 race. Wide open, one of the most exciting conferences in college football this year. The Big 12. This is the first game league-wide that counts toward the standings. Long play action. Jefferson snaps it in to Jacoby Jones, who has his first catch at UCF. And it moves the chains. Nice job with Gus on the motion. Setting up this RPO opportunity exactly like the touchdown throw to that hole. And here it is again. Over the top for Jefferson to the former Ohio Bobcat who joined the team with Jefferson this offseason. Yeah, it looked like that just slipped out of his hand. Was kind of checking the strings like his tennis racket there when he let that one go. Air mailed it. Four down territory here all the way. Nothing hurt. They're not going to go for, you know, field goal from this distance. Do you want to break a tennis racket? I would if I played tennis. It seemed deeply personal. <laughs> Oh, it's, like, you know, it's like a receiver checking the gloves. What's what happened to the gloves? Slow total substitution that time. They got, they got to pump the play clock. That's my son not happy. Well, they, they didn't, and now the flag comes out for a delay of game. They did not pump the play clock there. And Gus Malzahn, irate. It's the same issue. If, if, they, if they substitute, he said that's the third time. Play game. Offense, five-yard cover. Still second down. As long as they suck, they're going to let them match that initially. And that, you know, T.C. is definitely making the most of this slow, slow turtle substitution. A lot of these defensive guys call it to uh, work this situation. of it back. He's over 100 yards on the night for the third straight game. And you heard the pads pop that time. It was, it was Canada. Fitting up on Harvey. Harvey Gibbett is a heavy runner. And Canada down for TCU. Said earlier, man, you gotta bring it to get these guys. The guy to see them shedding tacklers, defensive linemen running through it, linebackers running through it. Canada gets him to the ground. Little, little kick there, you know, as Harvey tries to finish the run to the to the helmet. Hopefully, everybody associated is okay. Come on, the TCU already shorthanded in the secondary. Channing Canada down here. Fox College Football is sponsored by Pacific Life, creating financial security for nearly 160 years. And Channing Canada, the injured horn frog, defensive back going into the injury tent. And let's go back to that moment, the delay of game call that Gus Malzahn was upset with the officials about. Yeah, so you'll see 13, Penny Boone, the running back. And then a hash there. There's the substitution with R.J. Harvey. As soon as that happens, you see all the officials do that. at the iron cross, put their fists out. That's saying, hey, we got to give TCU time to substitute. That's, again, that goes back in the hands. And here comes Harvey, straight downhill into the end zone. One score. Touchdown number three, don't got to worry about all these substitution rules. Answers this and that. Watch R.J. Harvey, Mr. Orlando, split zone fit. 
That time Randy Pittman fitting up on Hodges, opening the hole, and they're going to go for two. And Jefferson and the offense stay out there to try to make this a field goal game. TCU led by as many as 21 in the second half. The two-point try shoveled underneath for Harvey, and he scores. KJ hands it to RJ. Great blocks up front. Finishes for his third touchdown. And then KJ to RJ, a little flip underneath. Three-point game. College Football on Fox is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Built to serve. Well, it is hey, 20. DJ. Yeah. On the ones and twos, he turned into a 21 3 run for UCF here since it was 28 7 Horn Frogs. TJ KJ likes what they're spinning. Jefferson excited for this matchup for several reasons. Three straight touchdown drives for UCF. And now the pressure back on tonight's power play sponsored by Ram Trucks. Built to serve our power player is Josh Hoover, the TCU quarterback. First strike of the day to McAllister to go up and get it. Unbelievable catch by Savion Williams. And then you thought that was unbelievable. The second one was better. And then the launch home run to Jack Besh. Four touchdowns on the day. Would love to put together a drive right here. A little run, a little RPO, a little quick game. To try to ice this or push it that direction for the home fly. Pressure off the edge, and Tennyson almost got there, but enough to force the incompletion. Ladarius Tennyson right in the kitchen of Hoover, the quarterback. Tennyson can't bring it, man. The Ole Miss transfer, hiding it, hiding it, coming down out of nowhere. Wham! Lucky that that hit the turf. He said, man, I was this close. Mark, UCF kind of hid him the first two weeks. He didn't play that much. Yeah. Gus Malzahn said he was 100% healthy. And Tennyson comes up with a big stick of the quarterback on first down. It's Cook exploding ahead. Shulay's tackle for Barr. That linebacker brings up third down with help from McWilliams. Ethan Barr, 32, prevented a touchdown right there. That little split action. He was gone if he didn't make that cat play. TCU has feasted on these third downs tonight. They are 75% on third down. Over the middle, that is corralled by Curtis. Right at the marker, he's got enough. Man, this, this is baited out by Ted Roof, defense corner. Watch, bars right over the center. Brockermeyer, he punches out right underneath the route. Just that much better execution by Hoover to Curtis to nose to that 35-yard line. Hoover hung in after he was, yes. he was hit a couple plays ago. Lose, lose. 32. Timeout. timeout. TCU. Yeah, TCU got caught in a substitution there. Forced to use that timeout. Timeout. TCU, the first in the half, 30 seconds in lane. We hope you enjoyed the debut of our Fox College Football Friday nights. Do it again next week. How about it? Illinois at Nebraska, number 23 Cornhuskers. We call Meyer for the Illini. Big win against Kansas at home last week. Part of a sold-out crowd in Champaign. Nebraska off the win last week against Colorado. Here we are in the Big 12 in a one-score game. A problem last year for TCU. Yeah, we talked about the, the, you know, kind of the malaise that hung over this team last year after the hangover from the national championship game appearance and just had, had a bunch of one possession games that didn't go their way. Sonny Dyke said they worked a million different situations this offseason to try to, to, to finish the deal in situations just like this. Those one score games you think about. Hit no toad in a hurry, winning at Baylor with the emergency field goal. About their win against Michigan in the college football playoff.
trying to write a different story this season. And on the march again, it's a first down to Jack Besh, 16 yards. Fearless, fearless. Watch this hit, hits the top of his post route right underneath the <laughs> bowler, just injury. inside Adams, outstretched, trusting his quarterback to protect him and get down. Big time play by Jack Besh. Besh is second 100-yard receiving night of the year. He's up to 148, including his 50-yard touchdown. And Brandon Adams, the cornerback for UCF, down in the field. the way he's addressing that. Hopefully that's just a cramp situation, the way he's flexing that. That calf is what that usually means, but it is painful. I just don't want to speculate on anything much other than that, but these guys have put in their work tonight, man. A lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage. You see him putting weight on it. Getting over there. In his own power. Another, another long physical corner. So Antoine Jackson comes in to replace Adams. Over with the UCF training staff. Injury to the defensive player. The play clock goes to back up to 40. Came after the explosive play to Besh. His fifth catch tonight, over 15 yards. He has been an explosive play machine. And the flag. Besh, Besh jumped. He was trying to explode again, I think. Uh -huh. False start. Offense, number 18. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. He says, hey, I've got some new blood at corner here. I'm excited to go attack this guy. A little too soon. That was Jackson hovering over him, who just came in for Brandon Adams, the injured cornerback for UCF. You see Jack Besh's night tonight, too. He's going, to, yeah, that's that's a foul. That's 1-0 Antoine Jackson so far. Might be the first negative grade on tape for Besh tonight. He's done it again, and Cook hit it off near the original line of scrimmage. He got five. Little guard tight end pull on the counter. Getting all that penalty yardage back, second and ten. TCU hasn't really needed the run game tonight. This is where, yeah. Yeah, this is where you'd love to, for, for that to pay off. A lot of RPOs in their system. This is just short time. Right back to Bess. He does attack the new corner, Jackson. And he wheels his way all the way inside the red zone with the shoulder pads driving. 6'2", 215, and a ton of confidence. Gets the ball in space, and then he looks for contact. Watch the route. As you said, attacking Antoine Jackson eventually on the outside in coverage, and then looking dudes up right here, putting his right foot in the ground. Great truck finish, and this crowd is on its feet. He's on his way to 200 yards tonight. 187 for Bash. More yards in this game than he had all last year. Getting his 50-yard touchdown to open up the first half. There's Cook. He's upended. And he plunges inside the five. Second down and goal, TCU. These yards have to catch. Besh becoming the quarterback Josh Hoover's favorite target. And the truck finish and fired up the crowd. Dose of Bash on this drive got him down here. Time to go up two scores again. TCU. It's Cook patiently working his way toward the goal line. And Hoover pushed him, but didn't <laughs> quite get there. Third down and goal. Yeah, he's done a little bit, bit of everything today. A little reverse Philly special here as Cook 
puts his pads down. Hoover says, let him get up. Mm, that's a minus. That's just, that's a blocking minus for sure. That's, that's funny if you win the game, then you joke it. Two plays to get a yard. Question mark? Yes, absolutely. This crowd can sense it. Ooh. That's, uh, that's always a little sketchy to work that hard count. The False start. Off, offense. Oh. Number 55. Five penalty. And, and Still third one. down. It looked like Josh Hoover came up and hit the hard count. That, that's the tough part about that. Going on anything other than a conventional cadence down here with these old linemen. Your, your benefit is you, you go half the distance, which is about four inches or five yards. Put you in third and six. Way to go. Same question. Two plays to get six yards. And you're up. And you're up three. I'm saying yes at this stage. Block drops inside. Nine minutes in the game. Hoover to throw. Pocket collapse. Hoover gets it away and incomplete. Sheldon Arnold had coverage on Curtis in the end zone, and it's fourth down with a TCU fascinating decision coming. Yeah, great rock recognition here by UCF's defense. 18, they're trying to throw a bench. Going on a little delay to the backside, and they sniff it out. Hoover wisely throws it away. And now fourth and six. Four, sorry, fourth and goal. Sonny Dykes and company elected to to kick the field goal. That will still obviously only be a one score game, one touchdown day, game, and a hot KJ Jefferson. And Lemmerman, the freshman kicker. Looking for a six point lead for TCU. And Lemmerman splits up. Huge false start ends up forcing a field goal for TCU. The Knights' hot offense is trying to come all the way back, down six in the Big 12 opener from Fort Worth. Tarts off in the Big 12 opener from Fort Worth. It was a 21 point TCU lead. It's been trimmed to six and UCF's getting the ball back. Yeah, hot quarterback coming off the sideline, KJ Jefferson. Five of his last six. UCF has not led tonight. Let's look at our Pacific Life game summary sponsored by Pacific Life. Creating financial security for nearly 160 years. Second half started off Hoover to Besh for the home run. Harvey doing it on the ground, and then the kicking issues continued to third. <laughs> Just your, your set, the third block kick of tonight's matchup. Kobe Hudson finding pay dirt through the air. RJ Harvey on the ground, and then later paid it off the two point conversion to put where they are right now at 28 and a one score game. Starts with Harvey. And not going down easy. It took another it army like, of horn frogs. Yeah, like, like a six tackle miss, one yard gain right there. Well, KJ Jefferson, when he's had the pass in the second half, he's been much more efficient. He's doubled his yardage, and he's five of six through the air. He's after a four of 11 first half, and just 64 yards. Might need some more of that to take their first lead on this drive. They'll ask for it here. Jefferson through the air. He wants Hudson. It's knocked away, but a flag comes out. That has been the matchup. UCF has attacked. It's brought in coverage, drawing the flag. It's like a one-on-one -on -one drill all night. Just straight up man coverage. No doubt about that one. You got the early hold, the late restriction, early contact. No doubt about this one. Good job that time by Kobe Hudson. You see him plant that right foot and go up and really accentuate it to uh, draw the penalty to Broughton. I don't know what they're talking about here. 
They're fouls on both teams. Holding, holding, holding. Offense, offense number 69. 69. That was your fair defense. Defense, defense number 13. Number 13. Those penalties are lost set. Off set. Second, Second down. down. Hidden flag back. Yeah, that was Paul weird. Yeah, Paul, <laughs> Paul Rupelt, yeah. the right tackle called for the hold for UCF. There's six foot ten German. It's really, you know, held up in the play action pass world. 69. We may have called it on a yellow reverse takedown right there. Yeah, Medley the guard. Yeah. With the wrestling move. They'll replay it on second and nine, and Harvey makes it third down and two. Jamel Johnson stops the first down. Oh, this is, get back to me. I'll put us in on third and man as well. This is where UCF wants to live with two big backs. There's another substitution situation, so TCU making the most of their time on the slow substitution. Making Gus Balzan and company work as late, get as late of a look that they can get. Well, now remember, helmet communication it's out off, inside yeah. 15 seconds. So this is all on Jefferson to get things signaled. They do get it off. A third down and two. And burrowing ahead for a first down, it's R.J. Harvey. All those chess pieces moving around on that third down, and UCF converts. Yeah, Gus Malzahn has found something here. He loves this. Watch on the back side. They're blocking the front side, just a straight zone. And then Randy Pittman, the insert tight end on the back side, is fitting up, trying to get to the back side back. At that time, he couldn't. Hardy says that, that was hard work, that third, first down right there. Deserved the break. Yes. Before first and 10. RV at 174 yards. On the edge and made a little something out of that with Elarms or chasing him down from behind. Xavier. This guy, you, you can just see him explode it. And you said Elarms or great job recognizing it. It's one thing to recognize it, and you got to get him down. You got to chase him down and then get him down three on three right there in space. Elarms or it's the best of Townsend. Elarms or pushed Johnny Hodges for that starting linebacker job in camp. Hodges, the leading tackler on the national championship run team two years ago. Here's Montgomery with a physical run, finishing forward. Another third down. Coming for UCF after they got it on third and two. Just another physical run by Miles Montgomery. We saw his ability in that the highlight earlier coming out of the backfield. He's a, he's a do-it-all guy. He's going to be subbed out here for R.J. Harvey. TCU will then match that personnel with their own personnel. The chess game continues on third and three and 535 and counting. Timon Mitchell, the big nose guard, was in no hurry getting off the field. So down inside 10 seconds on the play clock again. And third down. It's a game. It's Kamara. Great recognition by Abe Kamara. This is a sprint draw action. You'll see the action start to the left, coming back to the right of the offensive line, and RT Harvey is sniffed out. Kamara says, hey, on that sprint draw action, you're slow here for a second. I could trigger in, get you to the ground. Great recognition and awareness by Kamara. Richardson, the edge of his fingertips hold that in. TCU coming out with a little over four and a half minutes to go. Trying to ice this thing away on what was a big exhale from the Horn Frogs side. Yeah, Savion, his best Savion here with the fingertip strength. And a great job getting vertical and making something that cut, he got that inside the five. Took every ounce of those grip strength tests that they do in the weight room with the strength coach. Difference between a turnover and Besh and Uber being back in the field here. So playing the game here, UCF has all three timeouts. We're at 437. And then you've got the bonus two-minute timeout coming as well.
Pace with a nice for TCU, and that gets snowed under. Rabney run down by Pace. Deshaun Pace, great recognition again, very similar to what Kamara just said. He said, hey, this is a base play. I recognize it. I'm going to trigger and get big Drake Dabney on the ground. Sonny Dykes told us yesterday, I got to say nothing to my guys. You are here. It's a national TV game. Sold out crowd. Big 12 opener. Nothing needs to be said, but they're about to face some big third down, and UCF's getting the ball back. Yeah, Deshaun Pace. Unassisted tackle, unassisted tackle back to back here. Watch number three right in the middle of your screen. Recognize the screen pass. And great job getting Cam Cook to the ground and a little bonus out of bounds until it's reset that clock will run. For Sonny Dyke's offense, this has been the money down in distance for him. Yeah, for third and eight, not only the idea down in distance, but they have been money tonight. Jack Bash rush. motions into the slot. The top target tonight, it's Williams underneath, staying on his feet, and can't get all the way to the sticks. Arnold wrangles him down. And with inside three and a half minutes to go, UCF takes their first time out. Yep, I was watching Gus Balls on there, on the way there, runs it over to make the most of that two-minute timeout. 3.23 left. Watch Savion Williams run the shallow cross. She's elbow there. Looked like he was down. On pace is hit. On, on pace is hit again. There's tackle, tackle, tackle by pace. Looked like that left forearm was down. They might change that spot a little bit. Got the mark at the 23. If they did change that spot, it would be fourth and four, fourth and five. With how last year went for UCF and TCU in close games, it just had to be this way. Exactly. It just And we said this last night, right? We were talking about, we, we thought we had one of the best games of the weekend here. Two totally different, you know, offensive philosophies and what they do. Two very... You know, well-coached teams, guys that have been doing it for a long time, two sons of Texas, and it's going to come down to the last position. And Gus Malzahn grew up in Irving, Texas, 30 minutes from TCU's campus. Lived here until he was about six years old. His dad, a TCU fan. Coaching in his first game at TCU tonight, Malzahn's offense is coming out in a one-score game, trying to take the game and break some hearts in Fort Worth. And we're here because of the block special kicks have been the story. That first one, definitely a low kick. The second one, just a great edge speed rush. That time, Bud Clark creased, essentially the D gap of that protection. Uh, it's so, it's so unbelievable in a game where you, you get three kicks blocked or block three kicks and it's not it's over this is a one score game i bet that's like a hundred percent that you win that game if <laughs> there's three block kicks and there's probably a very few on that tick mark sonny dykes talked about the resolve of his team at stanford yep. last year they would have panicked they found a way to win that one tested down to the final moments again in week three and harvey with a bounce Ripped up by Johnson, or else it would have been another big gainer for Harvey, who's over 170 yards. Yeah, he got a lot more than what was blocked there. Same, it's that same scheme again. Harvey and Randy Pittman fitting. And Harvey swallowed up by McDonald's. McDonald's says, "Okay, I've I've seen enough. Of this I got to get the backfield. Put him in a third and." Third and five situation here. Third and six now with that spot. Let's see if TCU plays the substitution game here. No, they're staying in this personnel group. Now they have not changed, so the official will back away. Exactly how it's supposed to be administered. White knuckle time in the Big 12 opener. On a third down, it's Richardson speeding ahead for a first down. The drive survives just ahead of the two-minute timeout. UCF chasing six points. Johnny Richardson, the flash, the 5'7", 175. Speed back is going to take us to the two-minute timeout. This is the two-minute timeout. 
Here we go. Two minutes to go. It was once 21 points. It's down to six. UCF first down on the other side of the two-minute timeout. Fox College Football is sponsored by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Two of the stars of this night, R.J. Harvey, running back for UCF, battling with Josh Hoover in this high-flying TCU offense. And Gus Malzahn said the trust is starting to reach its highest level with K.J. Jefferson since he transferred in from Malzahn's alma mater, Arkansas. That trust is about to be tested in front of this raucous crowd with two minutes to go needing a touchdown. Yeah, you had a great question. What, what do you have in most of the time? He goes, well, we're both from Arkansas. <laughs> what is his answer? Getting to know his QB. We'll see how it plays out. Screw It's Pittman on the edge. Randy Pittman whirling off a tackle, and he's out of bounds. Clock will stop inside two minutes. UCF on the march after 18 yards. Randy Pittman is a weapon, man. We've seen him in the physical block. A run game aspect, athletic, violent, great job finishing out of bounds. Get the ball on the outside on there. First and ten in business. The winner of this game starts 1-0 in what's expected to be a wide open Big 12. Harvey driving ahead. He's down to the 40. Remember, field goal won't do it here. Six-point game. Two timeouts for UCF inside the two-minute timeout. Yeah, but I'm sure he's reiterated with K.J. Jefferson both through the earpiece right now and in the stoppage of play of the two-minute timeout. Throw down territory over these situations. Take care of the rock. Accurate to Pittman. The second catch of the drive. Ball's out. Second first down. Ball is out. Whistle came. Ball is out. Johnson's on top of it. And surely this will go up to review. That'll be interesting. One on the field is that the runner was down, tried to the ball come loose for a first down. Namdi Obi Izor came in and stripped that free. You can see Gus Malzahn saying, snap it, go, 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 go. Yeah, and Sonny Dykes is going to make sure that does not happen. It's a timeout TCU initially. If they get buzzed down, he won't get charged. Time the snap. T timeout TCU, their second and a half. 30 seconds in length. So firm control. It's going to be a matter of where that left knee, whichever knee hits first, we'll see a different angle here, I'm sure. The shin could be down. We gotta bring in. We have Mike not Pereira, had a yeah. chance to check in with Mike Pereira. It is crunch time inside the two minute timeout. Mike P, what you got? Yeah, I'll tell you, it is crunch time. You're right. And to me, the call on the field is right. And because the, the shin gets down, the shin gets down above the ankle. And I do think that he is down at that point. The official comes in and gives a solid signal. So I don't. I think we have a turnover here. There's a bunch of people here in purple that would disagree with right now no, as know. they uh, showed on the on the screen and then they just announced that it's officially under review but anything above that ankle so right there he's down gosh that is and he sort of regains it for a second right there but mm. as Mike said the call on the field is everything. Well, Mike, question for you. So Gus Malzahn, the UCF coach, frustrated that the officials did not let them snap the ball. What did you see when it came to that? Well, this is at this point here. He ended up calling a timeout, didn't he? Or it yeah. was the, yeah. Yeah, so Sonny Dykes called, called the timeout. The timeout to, yep. to, to actually get a look. And again, they've got to get everybody set up, get the officials in position. So I don't think that's an element that he really has anything to complain about. And, and again, yeah. it's really close when you look at it, the ball starting to roll out just as the shin gets down. But remember, the ruling on the field was that he was down at that point. And, and I, I just, again, here, don't think there's enough to overturn it. 
Yeah, that angle right there, they're showing, they're showing this live in the stadium right now. And of course, again, they have a different opinion. And the key on the, the look we just saw is Obi Izor's left foot blocks that shin, but they'll kind of put all these looks together. And there was a clear recovery yep. by TCU. Johnson got on top of it. Ruled on the field, Pittman was down. And it wasn't a forward progress ruling, right? So that would automatically make this moot. And as the booth should, the replay booth, take as much time as they need to get this one right. And if it is UCF ball and the call stands, it'll be first down just outside the 30-yard line. not, if it's TCU ball, the game is pretty much over. Two timeouts, one under. They still have to get a couple of situational things going there if they, they decide to take any. They have to run for a first down. It looks like we have a, a verdict. Nail-bite in time. David Alvarez doesn't realize the millions of people watching this. He takes the headset off and has another discussion with his partner. Here we go. After further review, the woman on the field has confirmed that the runner was down for a first down. And TCU will get their timeout. They did not charge the timeout. That was a booth review. All right, so probably a little bit surprising that they went the route of confirmed, but as, as Mike Pereira usually is, he's, he's right. Not enough to overturn it. The shin combined with just a microsecond, millisecond after that of the ball coming loose. And then TCU gets their timeout back. So both teams still have two timeouts remaining here. Because it was a booth review. Because it's yet the booth review portion of it. A little piece of equipment on the field here to back judge to clean it up. Maybe a water bottle from a disgruntled Corn Fog fan that didn't like that call. The UCF trying to go the length of the field after they started back at their own 25, plus erase what was a 21-point TCU lead in the second half. Approaching the final minute. It's Jefferson protected. Jefferson going for the end. Over the top of Kobe Hudson. Jamel Johnson, who thought he recovered the fumble on the last play, had the coverage. Yeah, you see Kobe Hudson, the tight split, another corner post, an action we saw best score for the Horned Frogs earlier. Just didn't find that ball initially. It just sails on KJ Jefferson. But again, everything's four down territory. He said, almost, almost. Thought he had the game-tying score. Instead, second and ten. Jefferson runs out of time and gives himself up at the 29. And UCF uses their second timeout with 52 seconds left to think over a third down. Yeah. So again, UCF. he's telling him right now, hey, KJ, we got two, two downs here. Two downs, obviously conscious of the 52 seconds on the play clock. And that effectively, when you get that minimal of a gain, all the receivers are downfield. Bang that timeout, save that other one in your pocket. Well, we're going to get some answers to some questions in these next 52 seconds. That man right there, Sonny Dykes, made a change at defensive coordinator. Needed to put the quarterback in jeopardy more. Yep. UCF came into this game hoping to unlock their passing game. They almost surely have to do that if they're going to win it. Yeah, if they're going to win it, and then, and then, oh, by the way, if they do score here and it's 34 up, the most exciting extra point <laughs> of, of the day for sure. Avalos versus Malzahn. The play callers feels inevitable that we would end up in a moment like this, just like last year, when a game-winning field goal won it for Malzahn and UCF. It was when Avalos was at Boise State. Field goal won't do it here. Jefferson pulls it out and zings 
brings it in there for a first down to the reliable Kobe Hudson. Again, man, it's been a one-on-one -on -one drill. Kobe Hudson against J Travis Broughton all night along. Advantage Hudson there. He's got him here. Jefferson has him again. Hudson makes the catch, and a flag comes out. Touchdown, Kobe Hudson. And we'll check on the flag at the end of the play. Man, great recognition that time by K.J. Jefferson. See the ruling here when David Alvarez, our referee, gets done with the back, back judge discussion. There's going to be a discussion of possession, where he broke the plane, whether or not he broke the plane when the ball came out. Here's, here's his first announcement. The result of play is a touchdown. Personal foul, targeting defense number 21. The previous play is under further review. So Bud Clark back in action is the one flag for the targeting. Great release. That time you can't, can't see it obviously from this angle. You'll see this first look. Secured catch. Yeah, the ball did not come out. I'm 100% wrong. That is a catch. But a great slip release. Broughton. So he's a defenseless player at that point, so it's forcible contact in the header neck area is questioned now for Bud Clark. We will definitely bring in Mike Pereira to decide on whether or not he thinks that's forcible contact, trying to avoid contact, always has that next level of understanding that we don't. Mike, what'd you see? There's a couple of things to look at. I was just trying to get the one quick look. Number one, I don't believe it's targeting. Um, I think it's shoulder yeah. to shoulder. So he is defenseless. He gives protection to the head or neck area. But to me, it isn't targeting. The other thing is, is it a catch? That's the other thing that they're going to have to look at because he's going to be going to the ground after that hit. Um, is that enough time? And then that ball After further review, loose. there is no targeting. 21 may remain in the game. And so they so ruled then, yep. again, at least from that standpoint, that they left it as a catch. Now, they can, now without that targeting penalty, they can't move the ball to the two to the one, so it's going to be a standard, regular extra point try. Yep. Okay, and three awesome. kicks blocked tonight. Three kicks blocked tonight for UCF. Boomer with a chance to give UCF a one-point lead on a night where they have not left. Anything but automatic right here. And lots of time to think about it with the review yes. from Boomer. With the review, the official coming in and backing up the TCU player that was lined up offside. His kicks have been low tonight. Two blocks. On field goals, one on a PAT. For the lead for the first time tonight for UCF. Boomer puts it through. This crowd is silenced at Colton Boomer. That is that's big time. Been an eventful night. And with 36 seconds left, they take their first lead of the night. Square flush right down the middle. <laughs> Life of a kicker right there, right? Like those three, three other kicks never happened. It was a big time, big time play. The UCF fans remember it well. Boomer remembers it well. He had a 59-yard field goal blocked to end the Baylor game last year, a one-point loss. A PAT blocked against Texas Tech, a one-point loss. He flips it tonight to a one-point UCF lead. Josh Hoover, you have two timeouts, and whatever remaining time after this return, they will have multiple shots trying to chunk it down here and give him a chance to get a field goal range 52-ish as well on that side. These TCU fans hit the emotional climax at 28-7. Shortly after halftime, Besh with a big hitter to lead by 21. Now a pit in the stomachs of those across Fort Worth. 
with 36 seconds to operate. And the drive will start out at the 25. Let me in his career long 48 in a game. They, they, they were comfortable. With, both coaches were just over 50 yards. Both both coaches were comfortable with these guys just over 50 yards. So got to do some work. But those two timeouts help. Obviously under two minutes in college. If it's a first down inbounds, the clock will stop until the ball is set, ready for play. And then it will wind. Sonny Dykes on Josh Hoover said the tougher it gets, the better he gets. 36 seconds, looking for three points and a win. Hoover steps up, he's got a lot of space, and he gets drilled by pace. And TCU wants a flag, he did get the first down. So that'll stop Pulling the clock for now. That the runner was down for a first down. Yeah, it is a forward, forceful run, not a, not a feet first slide. So that is a, that's legal contact, and he'll get every inch of that spot. Hoover to the sideline, it's tipped and incomplete. The injury replacement, Antoine Jackson, almost sealed it. Yeah, J.P. Richardson was on a different page from Josh Hoover that time. Seven on seven is what this ends up up top, a little double move. Got to keep going there if you're J.P. Richardson. And in that case, just try to bat it away. Jackson wants to go with two hands, and Hoover under pressure, taking two hits and a layoff. A tough spot just got tougher for Hoover. 19, 19 seconds. seconds to go. He gets it away, and it's best. Was he under it? He was just shy of midfield. This kid is tough, man, standing in there. Another rush right in his face. The TCU's going to use their second timeout. Timeout. TCU, their second of the half, 30 seconds in length. Let me take a look at that catch. As you said, strong hands in this receiver room. Nothing from that angle certainly looks like his gloves are underneath it and secure it. No, no bobbling, no movement. This is another good look. Roll the catch out to the 48-yard line of TCU. So just shy of midfield. Now that looks like firm possession to me. I'm sure they're taking a look in the in the booth just as as we are. Timeout from TCU. Works against them, but it saves them a ton of time of being able to advance the ball. Spot it down just on their side of the 50. Best a guy that Sonny Dykes and Josh Huber say they trust with their entire heart. Want to get inside the 35-yard line here for TCU. 30 to the 35. Line of scrimmage line is kind of a Maximum range for Lemmerman. Freshman kicker standing by. Kyle Lemmerman. 92 for 92 on high school PATs. That, that's, that's hard to do. Hoover giving the chance over the middle to McAllister. To the 40 and a first down. One timeout, nine seconds. Looks like TCU will clock it. Yes, they're going to spike this. And he does with seven on the clock. So the key here, TCU has that magical timeout in this situation. So seven seconds, they can put this ball wherever they want in the field to play and then catch it, get down, immediately bang that timeout. It's second down. So this is a catch and get down at a certain comfortable distance. You have a certain number of plays to get, you know, to get five, to get ten. In these situations, from here it would be a 57-yard try for Lemmerman for the win. A timeout for UCF. That's interesting. Thinking timeout. about UCF, the third and final timeout of the half, 60 seconds in length. Potential game-winning field goal try. Now you can't ice the kicker. That is correct. That is correct. But this this plays more important, you know, right? Because this this will set up even the possibility of that half happening. 
They want to talk about, all right, this is the formation they were in. This is the personnel they were in. This is what they've done out of that. This is what they've done in the past in these game-ending situations. This, this play makes makes that last one possible. The freshman kicker, all that, that's, an, that's enough angst for the other part of it. One point game, seven seconds left, let's go. So again, they just got, have to get a chunk of yards. Obviously, they would love to get the first down, but they're still gonna utilize their timeout with seven seconds. Gotta, gotta catch it and get down. Because you know, this is another one of those situations you want to end up with the ball in your hands and run it out past seven seconds. Game's over. Fans in the stadium are saying this is the first one <laughs> of Big 12. <laughs> we are exhausted already. Time for one play, then to use that timeout. Tedworth on defense in his zone look. Hoover to throw. It's a quick throw. It's dropped by Richardson. And with three seconds left, it'll be on the leg of Lemmerman. So that's all they were trying to do there, try to get that chunk of the yardage. Ted Roof on defense, defense corner from UCF, played three deep zone, and it's all going to come down to this. Maybe at 58 when they're putting it. TCU led by 21. Down by one. The biggest. respect between these two teams man and it came down to this and he it, it looked like he had the leg just pushed it a little bit right unbelievable contact on that ball from that distance in that situation Gus Belzon's calculating all those victories I had in high school and all those victories I've had in college football I'm gonna be able to count on one hand I blocked I had three kicks blocked against us and we won the game. That, that, that's that's going to bust every stat in the history of football right there. Mm. It had the leg. It did. It did. And a happy dance. A happy night. Back to Orlando for the Knights. Well, the Big 12, we think it's going to be nuts this year. What a preview of what we think is going to be a great race to Arlington for the championship game. A 21-point comeback for the son of Texas, Gus Malzahn, back at his home state tonight.